So they want to show you the way of God. But I like what Nahum said. Nahum chapter 1 verse 3 said, He said, For God is slow to anger, great in power. He shall have his way in the whirlwind and in the storms. He said, The clouds of the heavens are his dust on his feet. Nahum chapter 1 verse 3. He said, Even in the storms and the whirlwind, God will find the way to find his way. Even in calamity and trouble, I pray today, whatever you are going through, whatever your mind is clouded with, God, that is the God of Nahum, will still find his way in that storm. God is going to find his way in this whirlwind. Is that what I'm talking about? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So it's a very serious matter, sir. God has a way, but we don't know the way of God, so we keep erring. We keep erring. And we keep failing and we don't understand why. Because unfortunately, there is a certain teaching that has entered the church. And I'm going to get into that right now. Now, if you notice something very interesting, uh, today's fast was on Revelation chapter 2. How many of you know that? How many of you have fasted? How many of you fasted? The Lord bless you. Increase you. As your stomach reduces, may your grace increase. Yeah. As your outward man is perishing, the inward man is reducing. Whatever size you've dropped to, maintain that size. Because you should be ready for another fast in May. June, July. Then we are going 40 days. Prophet Manasseh is coming on the 5th of September. Last Monday I met him and we circled the day. So 5th September, book it down. We are having pathway of the spirit. Prophet Manasseh is coming. And this one will move to the bigger hall. Because anything can happen. Are you understand where we have got it to? We can't have special meetings down there again. So now bigger hall. Amen. Professor Godia too says he wants to come. We should find a thousand seater. So we are praying. I told the I told estate team. Hmm? How if you remember? When the year started, I said that God told me September must not meet us here. So find a bigger place. For now we are nomads. Amen. God will give us a bigger place, bigger sound, bigger. You see the speakers hanging in the sky. When we say hallelujah to do believe us. Amen. Sometimes the sound doesn't make them believe us. When I was coming, I was seeing a lot of text. Sound, please do something about the sound. I had to call the guys. I said, you people, you get my wahala today. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are you here? Are you sure? God must make you a little. And God must give you capacity. Because the way sometimes you can go for one night and do is not a joke. You have not known the way of God yet. You can't sleep in a... Kweku. Hey, Kweku. You are here. You are... It's good. And then you are not Hallelujah. So what is going to happen is that, are you here? Once upon a time, sounds one upon a time, when God decided to make man, now man's problem is this, man thinks that he was created to enjoy life. Bible says in the book of, ah, <laughs> I greet you people, Donna, mom, I see you. Kakra, I see you. Lord bless you. Now, scripture says in Romans chapter 8, verse 20, we quote this a lot. When we are in trouble and disaster happens, all things work together for the good of them that are called what? I love the Lord that are called to purpose. Uh huh. But you see, the mistake we do is that we don't read the prepositions right. All things work together for the good. To them that are called according to us, his, not your. The purpose there is not your purpose, it's God's purpose. You see, there's a message that has made us replace his glory for my glory. This is why the church is struggling today. Because we don't understand that according to what Revelation chapter 5 said, chapter 4, sorry, said, he said, We were created for his pleasure, yea, we were formed for him. So you and I sitting here, we were created for God. We are not created for ourselves. You think that you are here to marry. No, no, that's the thing. So you can give God attitude because you are single. Let me announce to you, not as a prophet of doom, some of you will marry. It's not a case, it's the truth. I adore Shina. Some people don't understand this. Some of you will not marry before Jesus shows up. Let me go further. Some of you, your husbands 
must be widows before you marry. Now, I'm not cursing you. I'm speaking the truth. Oh, yeah. I'm serious. I'm serious. <laughs> you have no idea. You see, the mistake is that everything you are doing, hey, ush, ish, ah, is because all this while you have drawn your purpose and not God's purpose. So it's like everything I'm saying, like, ah, I can never be. But that's how you fight for a long time. Then it's now 45 you are marrying. And the man you are marrying has lost his wife. And you are now going to be the overseer's wife. But because you were waiting and didn't wait in revelation, the man likes you. But when he measures you up to overseer's wife, you are not prepared. That's how they call you for one week. And after discussion, we don't call you again. Because you are not heavy enough. No, today I'm bringing you to a certain revelation. The story of your life is not your purpose. It's his purpose. You have your height, your face, your, your situations are all designed for his purpose, not yours. I, I believe the day we come to this truth, eh, a lot of peace will hit us. Because the problem with the warfare is, from the garden, Satan brought his purpose, man created his, and God's own was there. So the battle in the garden was the battle of the wills. The will of man, the will of God, and the will of the devil. So there was a fight in the garden. What you are calling difficulty in Christianity is not difficulty. It is your flesh impeding. I told you on Sunday, spirituality, your flesh prevents God from having full dominion. And God allows situations to circumcise you. You know, there's a way God will let situations circumcise you. And you get to a point where Abraham is anointed enough to have children. But the issue is that as long as he trusts his flesh, God will frustrate him. So the day Abraham, the Bible says, he came to an end of himself. When he himself realized he's weak, the sperms are finished. So he has left normal sperm count to low sperm count to no sperm to count. That's why now he believed that this is the promise. So that by the time Isaac came, there is no way Abraham would say, there is strength in me because he did not consider the deadness of his body. Deadness means that the sperms were finished. Spermatogenesis has ended. Then when they went to the woman to, who Genesis has ended. In fact, it had not just ended. She has gone beyond menopause. To close to death, the womb size has reduced. Because the Bible said the womb was shrunk. That's why the Bible says she needed faith to give birth. So it's not just old age of receiving baby. It's to have the strength as an old woman to even push. The strength as an old woman for her pelvis to open again. For babies to come out without CS. Hmm. Am I talking to somebody? <laughs> Some people, they think that the miracle is just conception. They don't know they need faith to even push. Mm. That's why some people get pregnant with graces, glory, breakthrough, job, but it dies about it. Because they didn't realize that one grace for conception, another faith for pushing. Mm. She's like, I got a scholarship, but I didn't get to fly. <laughs> she didn't just need, she needed faith to even conceive and to give birth. Because it was a dangerous matter. You know the shocking thing about Abraham? He married again after Sarah died. And gave birth to other sons. But do you know apparently all those sons, God didn't respect them. Neither did he even respect Ishmael. So it means that the purpose of Abraham is Isaac. Whatever he does outside Isaac, all that God is concerned about, I need one child. Oh, am I talking to somebody? I'm going to preach a message. Are you, are you ready for the message? <laughs> when we talk about intimacy now the mistake we do is that intimacy is like a yeah, kind of same cry it's like a genie in a bottle so intimacy is oh lord I love you I love you I love you then that God will appear outside the bottle Ooh, you love me what do you want me to do for you so it's like every day you are saying I love you, it's a button because you've been told that when you are praying the Lord's Prayer, say our Father who art in heaven, hallow him first. Then bless him. Then pamper God. And I wonder when Christians are talking like that. I wonder, you do know God. The day God appeared to Isaiah, Isaiah said, I'm undone. He couldn't speak again. The way we think God is, we think God is petty. 
we think god is human so he's inflated with ego he does not inflate god oh my god <laughs> yet you've not read in scripture there are people that call it upon my name but their hearts are far away so you are defending def def god go to her hey, let me tell me come on can i show you something okay 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 so in genesis 1 something happened now that purpose in genesis 1 was not communicated well to us because it is an explanation of a manifestation in time that seems to blind us let me let me say this and say this well anything you see in the physical usually is a veil to a spiritual so the spiritual hmm. that's why a man can marry Vashti and not realize Vashti has some character issues because the physical has veiled something you can't see hmm that's why some men have slept, slept with fish and snakes. But the physical has veiled the spiritual. I'm dialing numbers tonight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Some women have killed dragons. <laughs> and the dragon flew to your destiny. <laughs> He's in the sky. <laughs> we need special prayers to ascend into the mountain and the firmament to the realms of the heavenly wickedness <laughs> and collect your destiny back. Please, that's a joke. Don't then pray it as a prayer to me. I'm joking. Amen. Hallelujah. So, some of you, if you only knew that a lot of the things you see physically is a veiling of a spiritual condition, you'll be lost. For instance, let me give you an example. One of the ways I can measure someone is not okay is when the person can do 25 statuses per day. No, all of you here will testify. No, you are not fine. Something tells you, post, 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 post. Why? Can I preach the message I want to preach? Can I preach? Can I preach it? Can I preach it? I feel like preaching the message. So, when you are buying a car for your wife, the whole world must see it. Because you are, you are hiding something. It's a gift to your wife. It's not a donation to an orphanage. You don't have partners that help you buy the car. So, we don't need to know that you really bought the car. Are you understanding? So there's a certain culture that we have out there. Hmm? Yeah. He knelt down and proposed to you. Praise God. She said yes. Nice. Make sure she's still, she's still saying yes. Because then the I don't understand why you said she said yes. But when he said no, now you are not telling us. So after two weeks, we are one. Ah, it's another face we are seeing. What is going on? That there's a culture we have now. And we don't realize that the social media spirit is masking things. <clears throat> oh, man, it's very easy for me to measure when you are not okay. I just go online every day, 27. Unless it's a business page, don't get me wrong. If it's business, you have to show products. But series of, the Lord is going to do this. Blah, 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 blah. Then you are cutting everybody's status. You are means, yeah, means, and you are cutting people's status 70. Hey! I've muted you long ago. If you do not, I'm telling you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because obviously, you have time to go through what you are going through. That means that, that tells me that you are afraid to be alone with yourself. So if you don't see and hear something, you're not okay. <clears throat> yeah, and, and that's a spiritual condition you have to deal with. I'm telling you. Because the moment, that's why some people don't know how to be single. They have to. You know, there are some girls, they overlay, they layer relationship. As they are exiting one, they have the next one under the carpet. So as soon as, not like one minute, single, no, no, no. I'm being single, I'm dating. Like, it's transition. 
It's like Muhammad gave it to Nanado. I understand it. It's a transfer of power. January 7th. You always transit. So, like, you never get the chance to ever be alone. And they don't understand why they keep repeating the same mistakes. The men are not bad. You keep repeating. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. I, I feel like preaching a message. I, I feel like the thing is entering me. I feel like preaching. Do you know the Bible says, when Adam saw all the creatures, everyone after their own kind. It means that Eve was Adam's kind. What Eve did, no wonder Paul said to Timothy, Adam was not deceived because he was well aware. Mm. It was the woman that was deceived because she didn't have sufficient information. It was so Adam was not deceived. So don't think the devil deceived Adam. Satan concurred. And Adam approved and they transferred power. So it was not deception. What it meant was that the Hebrew says Aisha, woman. Aisha means revealer of the heart. Every woman you marry is a revelation of you. No, so for brother, it's like I'm dealing with pornography. Father, deliver me. Chances are that. Hey, Gaba Shaba. Azumi Nitayas. Rekuni Nitayas. Because you will choose after your own kind. So the moment you keep choosing horrible people, you should go to the mirror and say, mirror, mirror on the wall. What is going on? Where I am? Where am I now? Oh, yes. Because a woman who is praying, a tunaba, will not be attracted by mundane. She will be attracted after her kind. Another man who can also do a tunaba. Am I dying or number or? The call has gone through. Let's say hello, hello. Respond, respond. Mm, mm, mm. So the problem with man is not a lot of things. It's one thing. It's one thing. Oh, I wish, I wish the church will know this. And I wish the church will come to this. You know why? Because I realized when God started the church, he gave us a pattern. It's a Simon Bachona. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. But my father which is in heaven. Upon this rock. Shall I build my church. Amen. Now. This rock he is talking about. Is not Peter. Because the name Peter. In the what do you call it. Greek is Petru. But the rock Jesus used was Petra. So he is not saying Peter. Is the rock on which he will build a church. If you remember in the book of Matthew chapter 7, when he spoke about he that heareth the word of God, it's like a wise man that builded upon a rock. So he said, he that heareth these things, it's like one that builds on the rock. So the same is the rock. So he's saying that the rock on which God will build the church is Jesus Christ, the stand of the living God. That is the rock. On which you will build the church. The revelation of the church is on the foundation of Jesus Christ as the rock. Now this mystery now brings me to a certain place. Peter now becomes the foundation. That ushers the other brothers into the work that God is about to do. Of course it's the saying. But Peter is the instrument God uses for the foundation. He said follow me I'll make you fishers of men. Then after that. There comes a man called Paul. Now, Bible said Paul was trained a lawyer, but he had learned the family vocation of tent making. Remember, when God was about to turn the story about in the work of the ministry, he found Peter on the mount rooftop in Acts chapter 10. And Bible says in the house of Simon the Tanner's house, he was praying. And God brought a sheet. And upon the sheet were many strange unclean animals. And he said, kill and eat. And he said, what? He said, these are unclean animals. He said, what I've created, do not call unclean. So God now gave Peter the sheet. Turn the sheet into a tent. So the fishing ministry, evangelism, brought to the teaching ministry, groundwork, establishment. As a wise master builder, I laid upon the foundation. So Christ, notice what Paul said in first. 
Peter, First Corinthians chapter 3, from 10 downwards. He now says, from sorry, 9 downwards, he now says that upon this foundation should any man lay. If you are going to lay and it's outside this foundation, then it's dangerous. Why? The foundation is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. That's what Peter received. But Paul says, I'm the wise master builder and I've laid upon the foundation. So Peter held the first stage. Paul now brought the tent. But then appeared a man called John. He is the reason for the power of John 21. If he tarries till I come, what is it to you? What he says is that the end time church shall be characterized by the nature of John. In the midst of persecution, John will stand at the cross. Mm. You didn't get this. Everybody will run, but John will not run. Then this brings me to a certain place in First Peter, First Timothy chapter three. Sorry, I think Second Timothy three. He says that in the last days there will be perilous times. Men shall be lovers of pleasure and lovers of themselves. Lovers of themselves mean that they will not do things outside convenience. Sacrifice is a strange language. If it's not convenient, they will not show up because they don't want to die. But John hazarded his life. In the presence of the Egypt, that once you follow Christ, you die with him. The man was in front of the soldiers and was watching Jesus. In fact, he saw gazed on Jesus. He was he was oblivious of clear and present danger. Peter denied him from a distance. John accepted him in proximity. <laughs> what was the fool? The church is in the Peter age still. That's the pain. We have struggled to accept Paul's work. Foundational establishment. We've been transited into John's revelation of the mending. John's ministry was a preoccupation that was found when he was saw, seen at the seashore by Jesus. He was by his father, Zebedee, and they were mending nets. And that's what Jesus said, follow me. This is your mending net. I will use it. Because everybody is going to preach about me. Matthew said I'm king. Luke said I'm man. Mark said I'm servant. But John said, all of you have forgotten one thing. He is God. John said, let me rectify this wrong doctrine. He is God. Now I will explain to you why. If you read John, he speaks about life and love amongst all the apostles. Because if you don't understand the love of God, you will be short-circuited in the divine life. People are using works to access divine life. It's not works. It's love. <laughs> it's love. So tonight, what we are coming to do is we are coming to activate a certain dimension of the flow of God's life in you. Listen, the life God has given us. Ah, I, said, I started saying from Sunday. You are supposed to show up and everybody will run away. Not because you said anything. Because Jesus entered the place. You are supposed to show up and people are begging that forgive our sins. Because you just brought God to the place. That one is not, it's not works. It's in the realm of love. It's not it's works. Well, have you forgotten what he said? To know the love of Christ. It passeth knowledge that he might be flattered with all the fullness of God. Someone will say when you fast a lot. No, 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 no. When you pray a lot. No, 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 no. It's love. It's love that makes you get full with God. To know his love. And tonight I'm bringing you to this higher matter. It's a higher matter that has been thrown away. It's a higher matter that has been discarded. Sir. Because we have joked with this trueness. The devil has winged us away. From what is relevant. We have entered into labor. And we are struggling. Sweating and we have no peace. Because we don't understand that the king's wife is as potent as a king as the one she's married to. But the wife is now working. Remember, when Ruth went to the field, she was laboring because she didn't know. What did Boaz do? Do you know Boaz knew about Ruth before Ruth knew about Boaz? Ruth chapter 2. Boaz was standing and fast. He said, what is that girl? He said, that is Naomi's daughter-in-law. The one who has been widowed at the death of the sons of Naomi. He says, that's so. He said, okay, allow her to glean off the field. 
I thought he would say, Stop here. He said, Allah here. Mm. I don't know if you, I don't know if you get what I'm talking. Are you here? Are you sure? I, I pray God opens your eyes. You see, there's a problem with the church today, sir. When truth is presented, we are struggling to accept it because it's, it's too simple. <laughs> it's too simple. That's why, they, and it's, it's human nature. The disciples come to Jesus and say, ah, You, you don't preach to us. Every day, a parable. Every day, a man went forth. Every day. Then when it comes to us, no parable. No revelation. No Moses I saw. No, no. He's just talking to them. I very soon. You'll be preaching for me. Not in these hands, you'll be filled with the Spirit. You're like, ah. Why are you telling us these things? In the, and he said, to you is giving the keys. It means the keys are simple. Mm. Mm. Didn't get that one. Those who don't have the keys will receive it as parable. Mm. So what you're saying deep, deep, deep. <laughs> it's because of truth. Either you are not realizing this is truth. Or you are not getting keys. <laughs> are we here? Can, can I keep, keep, keep preaching my message? Are you sure? Are you sure you're following me? So the mystery about this thing called intimacy is a serious matter. And Jesus came to show us. Can you imagine Jesus and release the Holy Ghost to you? Jesus could have left them and gone to heaven, seated in glory. But he says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Then he now gives them all power and authority. And he says, I will be with you always to the end of the world. God didn't call you to give you anointing to be on your own. God didn't give you that marriage for you to go and marry without him. I don't know if you get this. God didn't give you that MD position for you to become a MD and he's not there. Ah, then we have missed it. We don't get this. We don't get this. I'm giving you all the power and authority. But don't want everything. I'm always with you. What is going on? Because everything we need to do, he didn't mention he's the reason we must do it. Neither did he say he, we need proximity to do it. He said everything we need to do is in the power. But outside the power is me. I will show you something today. And by the time you get home tonight, you will realize that all your problems started from an intimacy situation. Let me even say this to get your attention. Do you realize that the highest weapon of hell is sex? Oh, I don't like that. Is that why are you still? Am I reminded you of your sins? Because people, people don't know that when the devil allows a gentleman to have sex with somebody outside covenant, he is veiled from intimacy with God. Hmm. Because the highest communication of intimacy that God could bring to the biological experience was sex. Don't know if you get it. I don't know if you get this one. I don't know if you get this one. You hear? So, the moment a man lays with the wife, sleeps with the wife, Bible says he will know. I said this on Sunday. So, in, in covenantal sex, it is an experience to consummate knowledge. So, Adam knew his wife. Hmm. Are you here? Hmm. Isaac knew Rebecca. So, the word knew there is used because that act of sex is a revelation of a knowledge which is the goal of intimacy. So what happens now is this. The moment a man lays with a woman or sleeps with a woman who is not his wife, Bible does not use it new. He uses lay. And Judah lay with Tamar. And Ammon lay with his sister. You know, I, I, you, you see all those things happening. Lay, 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 lay. Because it's not a legal transaction. That lay means that the moment he lay there, he has laid a little bit of himself there. So there's going to be a chance that what should follow him to guarantee intimacy properly has been left somewhere. It's getting heavy here. <laughs> Tonight you will send text messages. Brother, return my body parts. Wherever it has scattered, 
I gather it by the power of God. <laughs> because man of God, I came to understand. I said, why? Ask God, why? God said, at them, if you only knew. Satan's highest weapon is not theft. It's not lies. It's not gossip. Once he breaks the sexual barrier, ah, trouble has started. Oh, yeah. That's why the person of Allah, the Holy Ghost, to work on them, to release them from that sexual issue, where eh, they will struggle to be intimate with the Lord forever. Oh, yes. You will walk in guilt. You will never feel worthy now because the devil has brought you that place where God alone should have. That's why I said, every sin you sin, God will forgive you. But there's a sin when you sin, though God has forgiven you, your body will have an effect. Blocked the bridge of glory. So when you feel tempted and last, lastful, know that it's the devil's attempt to destroy a path. Hey, oh, Jesus Christ. They thought I, saw, I started soft. <laughs> you knew what I have in my spirit. You say, prophet, let's continue next month. Not next week, next month. Hallelujah. When God now created man, sir, God didn't create man because God had a problem with his enterprise. God didn't create man because God needed assistance. No. God didn't create man so that God will have... No, 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 no. Don't get wrong. God created man to be the receiver of love. Period. the time in chapter 8 wisdom speaks wisdom shouted on the rooftop calling forth then verse 22 says thou possessed me in the beginning of thy ways before the earth ever was then he says before the deep fountains came alive before the springs showed up before the waters before you clip the water then he says in verse 30 I was before him as one brought up by him I was daily his delight. I was ever by my side. This is Jesus Christ talking. Jesus said, I was ever before him. I was his daily delight. Mm. Mm. So, man of God, God now created man as the object receiver of his love. Because if God is love, love cannot be defined as love till there is a receiver of love. So, a person can say, I love, when we can't find what he loves. Mm. I, I hear. So when someone says, I love, they will ask what? We must find the object of the receipt. Then love has finished its communication. Because love is not complete if there's no recipient of love. That is what Paul said in Ephesians 1 6. Before we ever showed up on earth, the Bible says, According as he has chosen us in him, before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame in love. Wrong communication. The in love came at the wrong point. We should be holy and without blame. Come on. Verse 5 should now start. In love. Come on. He predestinated us. And the word in love, it means God was already in love with us. We have set his specifications. So he chose us and encycled us before we showed up on earth. Mm. And when he chose us and, and cycled us before we came to the earth, it was because having predestinated us according to the adoption of children. And that adoption is not civil adoption. The word adoption there is heotesia, the placing of sons. So it means that God chose us in love. Because when he saw us, he was in love with us because we had been placed at the same ranking of sonship with Jesus Christ. And God was happy. That's why verse 6 comes to give adulation to the praise and glory of his name. Wherefore, we have been accepted in the beloved. Once upon a time, Jesus was the only beloved. Now we are all the beloved sons. Because the word beloved is agapetos, receivers of love. So we have been accepted in the confluence of the recipients of love. Are you here? This is the eternal purpose of God before we showed up. So when Adam came, God said, At last I have found a companion. Adam is working with God. Because when God gave Adam and created Adam, 
Do you know Adam didn't receive a wife first? God didn't give Adam a wife first. Neither did God give Adam a job first. What God gave Adam first was himself. The first thing Adam ever knew and liked and wanted was God. So the first thing was God's presence. That's it. Then God now said to Adam, Now, I'm giving you a garden. Keep it and dress it. And that is the work God gave Adam. And that word work is ego, which means to say to bring to pass. It means that everything I've said, the earth must do. You must ensure that it brings to pass what I've said. That is Adam's work. Beloved, hear me now. We try to go to work without intimacy. That's how we get tired. We try to marry without intimacy. That's why I make wrong choices. We try to choose a job without intimacy. That's why the first day we sign the contract, after a week in the company, we are like, ah, mistake. Just a week, you realize that it's a wrong place. I shouldn't be here. Without intimacy. Because you were not designed to ever be by yourself. Hear me again. God designed you to operate by counterpart anointing. You are designed to fuse with God. And I bet you, a car, a house, that million dollar contract, you will still feel lacking. Because you weren't designed for a million dollars. You were designed to be fused with God. No wonder Smith said one day said, he said that the anointing will rest on me five minutes. I prefer that to a million dollars. Oh, if you come to the anointing, eh, I know what I'm talking about. One day I had to be in a situation where Papa had to give me a seed. I said, Papa, I don't like Here's oil. I like oil. This program, I know we all preach, but I like the oil. Do you take the money? <laughs> oil. Oil. You don't understand this thing. Your tiredness is because you are broken fellowship. You are weary. You can't stay in God's presence for a long time. It's hard for you. If the message is not cartoonish and funny, you are sleepy. You don't know why. Something is happening to your spirit. You have to be strong. You have no idea. How does a man go 40 days, 40 nights without eating? How does a man in fasting run faster than a chariot? Do they carry? They understood something. They understood something. And today you must understand that realm. Amen. That's a realm you must have. That office must, they must have a discussion at your back. You have not preached a single message. That's the spirit that makes you sit in a car and the taxi driver will say, I won't pick you. Because where he has been and where you are, <laughs> it can't clash. Somebody will be uncomfortable. Oh yes. You must understand what I'm talking about. And that revelation is in intimacy. Especially in this time, beloved, when the love of many shall wax cold. I was telling you on Sunday, love cold, wax cold means psycho. That's what the Greek calls it, psycho. When your love makes you psycho. So your love, what it means is this, the love of many shall wax cold means the love of many shall cause them to become psycho. The reason why you feel a lot of mental confusion and depression is because of your intimacy lacking with God. Hear me today. Hear me today. What makes you wake up in the morning? You are sad. Nothing has happened, but you are just down. It's because your love has wax cold. You are in psychosis. You are dealing with your mind, your brain is under threat. Jesus Christ. Because you see, your mind was not designed to think, it was designed as a conversation hub. So the moment I have a thought, the first person I talk to is God. It's pride that makes me carry a thought on my own. And that's what makes me depressed. But I must rather be impressed with divine impressions. So what happens is that the moment I'm sitting down and a thought dawns on me, ah, you are too tired for this work. You just quickly switch and say, ah, God, how can I be tired? I just finish sleeping. Then the Lord starts converting. Because I've told you to wake up at a certain time. I used to tell the people I used to pray with many years ago that you know something, there's a time to wake up. 
when God tells you wake up at five, my dear, you wake up at five. You're like, or your mind tells you now that this five you're about to wake up. You sleep only three hours. Chances are that if you wake up at five, you will sleep in the day. So don't wake up at five. Wake up at six. You'll be more tired in that one hour sleeping. Mm -hmm. uh, some people are here in the service. Don't let me start prophesying. Someone open the eyes of prophet. <laughs> Till morning. It's a lie. You don't catch it now. Mm -mm. Because if you don't understand the Holy Ghost, one day I was going to pray. I said, Father, wake me up at five. And the Lord said, What is your problem? I said, Lord, wake me up at five. He said, Why don't you ask me to wake you up at the appropriate time? Mm. That night I changed my prayer. I said, Father, when it's time, let me be up. Pa! My eyes were open. Without stress, I was okay. Oh, you are doing for yourself what God should be doing for you. Do you know there's a law of double jeopardy in the spirit? He said, Cast your burdens on the Lord. So as long as you are carrying the burdens, God is free. Hmm. He is resting and you are in labor. But he said, give me your labor so you rest. So I give you my labor. Then I will be at rest and God will be carrying my burden. So the point is this. Jesus said, I'm giving you power. I'm giving you authority. But I need to work with you. So when the burden comes, I'll carry it. So the reason why he's with us is every day we meet trouble. He said, Jesus, I won't handle this one. Handle it. I put it on you. And we are working. I'm with you. Listen, I wish, oh my God. Oh God. I was praying to them, God's me, and said, if my children will know me, they will understand further. Do you know when a child is talking? You, some of you are like, you don't hear God. You are supposed to hear God. <laughs> I will show you why you think you don't hear God. Now, so God is not working with God in the garden. Now, everywhere Adam goes, God is there. Adam's best friend is God. God's best friend is Adam. Adam is so locked up in God and what God said. Because, sir, when man finds God as his presence and falls in love with God, no job is labor. But God said in the book of Genesis, when Jacob in Genesis chapter 29 and 30 went to the house of Laban, Bible says when they tricked him and he had to work another seven years, scripture said for it was a few days because he loved her. That's what we, I remember daddy was telling us a story one time that a gentleman in fancy school had to go and visit a lady in Wesley Girls. And he didn't have transportation. So if you know Kate Coast where or Kotograba to Pedro, it's not a joke. The guy left and started walking. When he came, I said, guy, you take toys. He said, no, no, I walk. And he said, why did you walk? He said, you're a small boy. <laughs> I said, why you say you're a small boy? He said, why? He said, once you are in love, every mouth will be with a smile. Every mile will be with a smile because you are in love. It's true. I remember when I was on campus, Ken Westy. You will be in your hall, and brothers will be holding buckets of water for the sister. And the girl is on the eighth floor. And the brother will get there. And the girls too are wicked. That's the way you drop for you. So the woman says, Oh, thank you so much. Can you also help me? Because you are interested in Sister Oja and Sister Sharona is also taking advantage of you. That's how you fed bucket, eight buckets. That's how you be climbing. <laughs> Captain John, you are just working. Captain Bucket, and she will tell you no. She will tell you no. That's how some guy was screaming one day. After all the bucket of water, I said, So what do you mean? Did they tell you that's the means for yes? You will fetch the bucket. <laughs> she was designed for intimacy. God is working with Adam. And you know the mystery about intimacy? I've, I repeat it again. I, I keep saying many times. God knew from the beginning the tutelage of Adam is not in classroom. It's in working with me. And let me say something. When Bill had Bill that Eliphaz and what they call Zohar had spoken. Bible says they had all finished speaking. Then Elihu stood up and said in Genesis, Job 32, I thought great men are always wise. And the multitude of years should utter wisdom. But I look at them and I said, this body, I'm not speaking sense. <laughs> so great men are not always wise because there's a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the Almighty is what gives understanding. And before the boy spoke, you could hear what he was saying. He said, I'm full of matter. I want to vent out. Because they were not speaking things. That's why you're supposed to be in your office. Because the moment you are in intimacy with the Holy Ghost, you can be the youngest in the office. And I told you last week, because you are salt, when you finish talking, your CEO will reference you. You say, well, as John says, as Chris says, you're wondering, how did they reference you? And when they come and ask you, what did you just say? <laughs> you know, it's inspiration. 
you can't repeat it because everything came from the Holy Ghost. It came, pa, 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 pa. And you know what to do. Holy Ghost. Huh? Oh, this church and generation. God must open our eyes to see this one. Me, I caught that key when I was in secondary school. I was reading the Bible. I said, God, your word has said that Jesus Christ has sent us the Holy Ghost, who shall remind us of all things you have taught us. I said, surely this is the limitation. This is the limitation. There must be more. He said, it's true. It's true. Let me show you. Then I started reading John 7. Then I got to verse 15. The people marveled that Jesus knew things he had not learned. I said, ah. <laughs> the Lord said, you can know what you've not learned. Somebody is not getting what I'm talking about. Because Sunday school has not helped you. So in your head, if I don't know, how will I, how can I learn what I don't know? <laughs> That's how you're not a French-speaking person. But someone will speak French and you interpret it clear. And you'll go like, how come? How come? I remember I went to, when we went to Jobs recently. The next day, we we're going back. If I'm not the next day, that same afternoon, we had finished service. And we're going back to the road. They stick me there once. That's what I said. No, you've passed the wrong, you've passed the wrong junction. They can't say why. I said, no, this is what we're supposed to pass. He said, oh, let me be. I said, I'll be here for two hours. He said, let me know your yes. I said, no. The Holy Ghost. You know why? Because as I'm going, angels are giving me markers. No, 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 no. Someone comes to say, Prophet, you try, you can remember names. It's, my brain is too small for that work. My brain is not an empty office to store database. No. I'm oh, there are numbers I can just stand and say, Holy Ghost, remind me of this number. It will come. Whether London, whether US, whether Nigeria, it will just come in my spirit. It's not because I'm a prophet. It's because of this action of intimacy. I want you to see it tonight because the weaknesses you are facing is because you are not intimate enough. Because not every day a brother will shout loose. <laughs> you need the Holy Ghost to do that. <laughs> How of you know the story? You need the Holy Ghost to shout inside you. Lose. And every desire will vanish. Adam is working with God in a garden. Fellowship. Then God now shows him. What is that? And because he has been working with God, there is an auto sinking going on. God's database is being downloaded by proximity. Mm. As long as Adam is with God, he is thinking like God. You see, the mistake we don't get, we get is this. We think when we are having fellowship with God, God is judging what we don't know. But we don't know in fellowship, God is transferring what we need to know. God does not judge your ignorance in fellowship. He downloads omnip omniscience in fellowship. So what you should know as you are communicating with God, it comes on you. That's why when you are needing to do a decision, just go to the presence of God. Worship. Two minutes, two hours. When you are out, you know that mm, this is the wrong choice. You will just know. You will just know. It's a download of omniscience. Satan realized that if I allow this guy to go at this rate, <laughs> she will pray that God would and we can't stop this matter. So Satan kept entering the garden silently. But he was not entering directly. He was spying. Realized that the woman had a lunchtime FM station. With a certain guy called Serpent. They were conversing from time to time. Yeah. Well, I told you last week that it was the serpent didn't come one day. No, listen, it's so weird that you are standing here somewhere. Then a snake that has never spoken to you come and say, Has God said? Like, you know, like, what does this snake about? To tell you that something's up. So obviously, he was not coming with a voice that was strange to the woman. It was a voice that she was used to. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, to be a brother in the church. To be a sister in the church. Are you understanding? <laughs> if you are not careful, you don't sense the voice of God or the voice of the flesh. You are going to make a mistake. It's easy for you to say to an unbeliever, don't talk about my pastor like that. But you will listen to the one in church who is talking about your pastor. Yeah, the pastor did this to me. Because he's in church. So they must, they must be saying something true. But the same spirit that spoke to the unbeliever might be the same spirit speaking to this one. So the serpent showed up. And if he didn't see anything wrong with the questions they were asking. Like, oh, has, what has God said? 
as I've been saying, because if was not be answering things like, ah, I saw you and God, you've been talking, pa. Every day you pass and you avoid what's going on. Then if you say it's true, hmm. my husband told me after his meeting with God, this tells me something. You cannot live off someone's intimacy. A lot of you are living off your pastor's intimacy. You are living off your prayer purpose intimacy. And some of you are even like, oh, um, the brother is spiritual and um, he'll pray when we marry. Did you ever read, sir, that the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord, do together. <laughs> no, I don't go and wait and we mount. I, I hope you, I, you, you are, so stop that rubbish. Like you see your pastor on the mountain, at your mountain sending prayer topics that because he's there, we all go. It's a lie. <laughs> no, no, the church has entered this popcorn Christianity that oh, we will work, our pastor should pray. No, 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 I'll not, I'll not, I'll not, <laughs> I should wait and you will mount. No, how does Babu? <laughs> Monkey is working and Babu is coming to talk. No, God! God does not joke like that. No, 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 no. The only time is plural is when the man is drawn and is a bliss for God, he will draw others to come to that same spot. Not to have the same capacity. They will follow that man to where he is to get burned too. But you must burn for yourself. Someone will burn for you. That's why I always tell people that the moment you realize that things are happening to your mother, father, cousin, brother, Start preaching to them. Because chances are that it will come, your faith will not hold them again. Will, if you don't take it, they will die. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I have to call my parents and say, Mommy, are you praying? Yeah. Be praying. Because the kind of work we are doing, Satan is looking for the least available spots to attack. You think Satan is happy about what you are doing here? Also, let me show you a secret about Satan's weapon. People, they, Satan, if he does not get a pastor to steal the member's money, mm. No, we, we don't come with guns, so we use honey. Like 70 honey bottles. <laughs> Special anointing service. You know, I've done the mass in my head. <laughs> Drop some 3,000 CDs for 70 bottles. Can you imagine 3,000 times 70? Man, I've got 210,000. 21,000? No, 210. So that's 70 bottles. That's after that service. My children's school fees are paid. If the month I'm driving Range Rover. Is your honey? Hey. I remember many years ago, my father and the Lord called me and said, Man of God, can you imagine someone called him and told him that the way he doesn't have a car, he should organize sons and daughters conference. And after the conference, the offering we used to buy a car. Oh. And he called me and said, Is it? Man of God, can you believe this? I'm shocked. I'm shocked and apparently that's what some pastors do. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm 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 choking, but it's true. <laughs> we'll line up honey and you buy it. That's why we rob you. I'm telling you today. The bullet is the honey. <laughs> that's why I've told you that be careful of any prophet that will prophesy money out of your pocket. Any prophet that walks up to you and says that I sense you have thousand to give. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm serious. No, when I went to Nigeria, I realized that a lot of Ghanaian prophets do that. Yeah, so Pastor, Pastor Dovon was telling me when he saw me, I was like, Ghana prophet, catch me a prophecy. Catch me. That's how Pastor Dovon was saying, catch me a prophecy for 50 Ghana. <laughs> that's what I was telling me. Apparently, that's what we do. Yeah. And I realized it's true. Some people even come and see me, even right now in Ghana. That prophet, I wanted to see you some months ago. To gather myself and come, I say, Were you dis disintegrated? <laughs> were some of you in Nigeria? Where were you? He said, We'll have to gather financially. I said, Why? He said, You know, you can't meet a prophet without a seed. I said, In which scripture? No, no, where did you learn that? But look, let them prove it from the Bible. Somebody had their revelation, came to sow seed, so God opened door. That's it. But the person does not have seed. How will he now receive help? He has to gather what? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. That is how the, 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 we rob you with the gun. Then which other ones are I talking about again? Aside the robbing, I said something again. The what? The what? Oil. 
No, not oil. So, the person now shows up like that. I was saying something before I came to the pastor's robin. Eve. Uh -huh. Living of Adam's intimacy. Yeah. So the pastor will now rob you with that one. Rob you with that one. And the pastor will now raise you up with spoon feeding prophecy. Like, prophet, what is God saying about my life? I'm not hearing anything. <laughs> it's a lie. You will hear. We will all fast together. No, what do you mean? What kind of wisdom? No, that's what you say. So now pastors are now prophets of doom. And it's like we are, it's like when you come to a prophet, I sense God has a word for me and it's in your mouth. Then I also tell you that that sensing you sense is how you should have sensed what God is telling you. Because if you can sense that God has told me something about you, then did it to ask God yourself? Because you're asking me, I have no idea. That person I mean, says, what's up by now? Maybe to be on some watch out into the morning. What? Why? We have to force ourselves and you are looking at our face like if you don't say something, you're not powerful. I have nothing to say. Or you are walking a cramo and somebody say, Papa. Oh my god. See, I've seen you, there's a blessing in your mouth. A lie. Don't notice on my mind. Pizza. It's on my mind. Forget it. It's not in more How do you see me more? And you think I have prophetic word in my mouth. Then that's how I would have done a long time in front of a camera. You ask, what's going on? Prophet is then giving free prophecy. <laughs> I mean, come on. We are taking a shit. like, there's a word in your mouth. <laughs> you hope and find out yourself. And that's why I like Pastor Chintok. He said something to me in his church. He said, man of God, in my church, you hear God for yourself about your relationship. And I said, sir, why? He said, so that the day you are in trouble, you will not say, I forced you. I will remind you yourself. Are you not the one who said when you were under the mango tree, the wind blew? And the mango spoke to you, I am, I am, I am. Excuse me, why not? I will remind you of that prophetic word. <laughs> yeah, because people like to, people like to blame people. I've noticed one thing. There's one human nature that's so dangerous. We will blame everybody but ourselves. Blame everybody but me. And Adam is supposed to be working with God. And Eve is having some discussion. And the shocking part is that Adam is not stopping Eve. Adam is allowing that conversation to happen. You know why? God didn't have a problem. With Adam having secondary conversations. The thing is this. The problem God had was. Whether that, that secondary communication was sanctioned. Because the sanctioning of God was this. God brought the animals to see what Adam would call it. Adam didn't find a help me there. When he brought Eve. Adam now said this is now bone of my bone. Then God now validated Eve. As a sanctioned fellow partner of fellowship. Hear me well. Don't entertain anybody God has not said anything about in their life for you. Because there will be the means by which you leave your garden. You are entertaining friends because they are popular. Don't follow people because they are popular. Don't even be excited when a famous person says hello. If you don't have flames, I don't want you. I need flames over fame. <clears throat> I pray this generation will even uh, the way we invite people, we should invite people because of flames, not because they are popular. <laughs> so God has a sanctioned people for fellowship. The serpent was not part. But because man has free will, beloved, Bible says if it is willing, then it is accepted. Let me show you where God accepts your offering. At your will level. Hmm. Hmm, hmm. Let me let me let me come back. You see, so this thing that I come and say, if you have five thousand cities, I sense you should come. If it's not from your will, you have wasted your money. <laughs> some of you have thrown. <laughs> so like, so Paul, how can I redeem it? It's already mambo. Why are you asking me that kind of question? When you give your money to a scammer, do you say the scammer should redeem it? That's what Paul said. Every man should prepare in his heart what he shall give. So if a prophet says, I sense there are people here who want to give five, five, four thousand cities, it should confirm what God is telling you. 
Never come and say, oh, the way no one is coming is not nice. Oh, like we all sit there. We shall all sit there. That, uh, because you see God showed me from the Bible in the book of Genesis chapter 22 when God asked Abraham bring me your son your only son and God saw Abraham's willingness the Bible said at dawn he woke up and was asking God where are we sending him he didn't even tell the wife he means I'm ready to kill this guy <laughs> and do you know the shocking part ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. do you know that in the Bible when you read it according to how Sunday school and the Bible story picked it it looks like Abraham, um, Isaac was a small boy Isaac was in his 20s I'm telling you According to the historical fact, Isaac was a twin. So Isaac himself was willing to die. Oh. So the willingness of father and son is what God said is okay. I have accepted it. That's why God has not accepted grudging of me. You gave the money, but you were not willing. So it was not accepted. Me, I don't know. We'll use it. <laughs> ah, looks at the outdoors. <laughs> hey. Yeah, man. It took three days to detect that someone was using a false spirit. So sometimes I can go and bring cooking money. After three days, I go like, no, the way the one million dollars is coming every month. Let me ask where it's coming from. The moment I realized that out of the sale of we, I said, the Lord bless you, don't bring it again. But chances are that because we are human beings, I will also tell you we will find the other. We have used it for the Lord. Because the wealth of the wicked has been laid up for the righteous. Once we didn't know it has ended here. Whatever you did in Italy to send us 5,000 euros, the Lord be with you. Amen. But once we get to know by revelation that something is going on, then God is telling us stop that as, as transaction. Amen. Beloved, make sure it is willing. Make sure it's from your spirit. Make sure God is agreeing with what you are doing before you do it. Because if you don't, it's not accepted. This is the reason why when man enters will, God is frozen. But have you not read Psalm 78, the verse 40? They have provoked him in the wilderness. And they gripped him in the desert. And the Bible says they turned their back. They tempted God. And they limited the Holy One of Israel. Why? Because they remembered not his hand. Neither did they remember the deliverance which he brought them out of the land of Egypt. That's what he was saying. Kubala Shikaba. When the Lord wrote signs in the land of Egypt and wandered in the fields of Zoan. That's what Psalm 78 says. So we can limit God when we refuse to agree to what he's saying. That's why fellowship let me let me come here let me come here it's not nice so i can move zigzag and come this is it the bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for right the evidence of things not yet seen by it the elders obtain a good report and through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of god so that the things which we see did not come from the things which do appear he said by faith abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than his brother king. And the Bible says, God had respect unto his gift, such that he imputed righteousness to him. Then the Bible says, so that he being yet dead, by this act, speaketh. The Bible says, by faith, Enoch walked with God and was translated because he was not found. The Bible said, before his translation, he was not found because God took him or God translated him. Then he said, before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Then verse 6 says, Now without faith it is impossible to please God. He that cometh to him must first believe that he is and is the reward of them that diligently seek him. What he is trying to communicate to us is this. The goal of faith is working with God. The goal of faith is not for a car. Hey, the goal of faith is not for a marriage. The goal of faith is to work with God. Because Bible says, If you have faith, you must please God. And you see, the error is in pleasing. Now how can we now interpret pleasing? As once we please God, we'll get a car. No, it sounds funny. That you know, we've we've put it like that before. Like, once I please God, the marriage will happen. No. Then I must check what that verb is. The word please is the word rastios. And rastios, you rastios. And you rastios actually has to do with agreeability. The root word is agreeable, rastos. Agreeable. So it means without faith, it is impossible to be agreeable with God. But Amos 3 they said, How can two walk together except they agree? So Enoch walked with God by faith because he was in agreement with God. So faith is for agreeability that will ac give you access to walk. So your faith, first and foremost, is for you to walk with God. If I'm building faith, 
It's so that God and I will be agreeable. We can agree on terms. We can walk. We can have fellowship. The moment your faith comes low, your fellowship goes low. The moment your faith goes low, your fellowship is compromised. Because fellowship thrives on faith. Someone is asking me, so prophet, where does miracles come in? Where does healing come in? Where does testimony come in? They are byproducts. They are byproducts. They are byproducts. Do you know why I know they are byproducts? Psalm 68 verse 7 says, When the Lord went before his people, and the Lord walked and marched through the wilderness. The Bible said, the earth shook. This is God though. He went before his people. God showed up. He was come to visit. He went before his people. Psalm 68 verse 7. He said he walked before his people and marched through the wilderness. The Bible said the earth shook. Then the heavens dropped at the presence of God. Even Sinai was moved at the presence of God. So it means that the miracles was a product of God passing by. <laughs> Beloved, if God shows up, oh, have you forgotten what Psalm 114 also said? When the Lord God brought Israel out of Egypt, Jacob out of the people of a strange language, he said Judah was a sanctuary. Israel his dominion. Psalm 114, 1 down to 7. He said, Judah was a sanctuary. Israel, his dominion. The Bible now said in verse 3, he said, the sea saw it and fled. So the sea saw God coming and ran. The Jordan saw God coming and gave God space. So the pattern of the Jordan was not the anointing of a man. It was the appearance of God. The mistake you do. This is why he told the disciples in Matthew 17. When they said, come out, go. He, he said, how long will I be with you? You can do it because I'm around. So it means my level of intimacy will determine my potency in miracles. When miracles are reducing, I have to check my intimacy levels. Because my intimacy with God will make the sea run. And I don't even know what's going on. Because these Israelites didn't even believe in the God. They were just following a rod. Oh, he showed up among the elders. Told them about Elohim. They said, who is that? And he lifted up the rod. He said, Aaron, do the first one. As soon as they did, the elders said, we believe. We believe. Tell that Pharaoh we are ready. <laughs> so they were not following Jehovah because they've seen him before. No wonder they told Moses, every day you go and come and say, I am, I am, I am, I am. Today let him talk to us. So they don't even know what he's talking about. 215 plus years. Aaron knew how to create a, 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 an idol. They should know they were far from God. Priests were molding priests. In fact, he modeled him so much skill that when they appeared, he had to lie. He said, it appeared. <laughs> he told Moses, we just put the gold in the fire. It's a golden calf came out. I did nothing. You know what the Bible said? He was an artificer. He was the one chiseling the gold. Pa, 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 pa. High priest. House of Levi. <laughs> created a nice idol for them. So they had no idea who God was. They were just following the Lord. And the Moses that carried the Lord. But God took the lead. So it was not about faith. I'm showing a secret today. The thing about your failure is that you think it's all about your prayer. You think it's all about your fasting. They are going to access you to intimacy. That's why Jesus said, as long as the bridegroom is around, they need not to fast. But there cometh a time when the bridegroom is taken. In those days shall they fast. So your fasting is because he's not around. Your fasting is because the whole week you've not had time with him. Not a car. Not a house. Not a marriage. Not a child. I pray the church will put the order in place. Jesus told Martha. Ah, Martha. It's not about Lazarus dying seven years or two days. I am here. You know, this. The Bible says in John chapter 2. They said our ah, wine is finished. Mary didn't cry. He said my son is here. <laughs> he said son. Do something. Just do it. He said mommy. It's not time. He said I know. Do it. Just we are ready for you. We are ready, cry. We are ready. Just do it. Hmm. Are you here? Your problem is you think it's about you. The devil has lied to you, and that is actually the spirit of the temptation in the garden. You will be like the Most High. And being like the Most High is, the Most High's name is I am. 
So Adam too wants to be his own I am. So John in Genesis chapter 5, verse 1 and 2 puts it nicely. He said, Adam begat another son. And all their days upon the earth, he said, Adam and Eve begat. He said, Bible says, Adam and Eve, their names was called Adam. And he said, God had created Adam in the image and likeness of God. But the Bible says, when Adam begat a son, he didn't begat him in the image and likeness of God. He begat a son in his own likeness. Adam has become his own I am. That I that Lucifer generated in Isaiah 14, that was an antithesis to the I am. He injected into Adam. So today, your greatest problem is what can I do? Not what God can do. So we struggle to God do. When you even preach rest in the church, Christians will still ask you after service, so we shouldn't do anything. Can you imagine? We still want to do something, even in rest. So are you saying just laboring in the word? That's all? Yes. Are you saying how I fight addiction is more word? You say yes. How I fight anger is not holding yourself. That's how we become like a puffish. You're a puffish. Have you heard this about <laughs> it was obvious. Nobody could stop you. There's somebody can cool, keep cool till you explode and you don't know where it came from. You even feel shy after you display. Because you held it in. That is the Holy Ghost. Mm. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Beloved, when you have love and it is in its highest gradient, all the other eight to join. When love is in low frequency, that's why you can have gentleness and not have weakness. Mm. You said the fruit is not producing all nine in one. It's producing three out of the nine. Because the love is small. God wants to be with Adam. Because God is all alone. God now creates Adam. He said, this is it. This is it. This is what I'm looking for. A person like me. I can talk to in the morning. I can talk to in the afternoon. You know the shocking thing? That person he created looked like Jesus. So Adam has the image of Christ. Hmm. Let us make man in our own image. But 27 says Adam is now made in his image, capital H. And Colossians 1.15 says Christ is the image of the invisible God. So Jesus is now the original mold. Adam is the prototype. So Adam is walking. And as Adam is walking, Jesus is lurking in the back. And he's watching him. Then Jesus looks and says, Nah, God, it's not good that he's alone. Everyone is in his own kind. Two, 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 two. You must give him something. Because you see, our mistake is that we think God gave Adam a wife because God felt Adam would die out of celibacy. <laughs> Or all those useless jokes we make about singlehood. We thought that's Adam's problem. No. He said it is not good for Adam to be alone. In the Hebrew, it's not good for him to be all in one. There's someone in him we have to bring out. Why? In Genesis 1, he was male and female. So the Adam that is standing there is two genders in a person. So let's pull the woman out. And while we pull this out, God is so faithful to the type that when God says, Speak to the rod and strike it. And Moses goes beyond it. God is angry. Because you have broken a pattern I want to establish. So Adam's Eve was a picture of Christ and his church. So when Eve came out, Jesus smiled and said, uh, One day, it will be my turn. I will also sleep like this. And the people will come out of me. Then once upon a time, Adam was now chosen. You know, the, you know, the compression of time. In, in, in Moses' vision. So it looks as if Adam found Eve by his side. But Adam was in a deep sleep. And what he meant was that when Eve, he now woke up, he now looked around. Now, what makes me realize that Eve was not by his side was that he uses an exclamation of time and discovery. This is now. So it means I'm going around and I'm looking for what has come out of me. I feel there's something out of me that is out there that I need to find. I want to tell a young man something. When you come to the point where you realize you have discovered God's presence and God's work and you begin to feel there is something inside me that is now prepared to arrest that I may apprehend. 
the reason I'm apprehended of Christ. So a woman must come to revelation to understand what I am here to help. Because Christ apprehended us his bride. So a wife must now apprehend the reason her husband apprehended her. That is your mission. Why did you grab me? Where are we going? What is the assignment? Tell me your vision. Because if he does not tell you one, catastrophe will begin. Because the error starts when the man has no assignment. The woman will help herself. That's where the competition starts. Because you've not given me work. So let me help myself. I'll give my own self work. Kaboyash. Hmm. Adam now sees Eve coming from a distance. He said, ah. I remember many years ago, Pastor Victor Francis had a certain tree translator, an apostle. He used the tree word for now. He said, Webe. Webe. That's what the tree Bible says. Webe. 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 This is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. And Adam was engrossed in Eve. He said, She has my content. And I like the container. Because she has my content. Because you see, like the cattle and the goats and the sheep, I could talk to them. But they didn't have my content. They were not my material. And I didn't like the homes. <laughs> and I didn't get why they have to go on all four. I thought the best would be in front, but the best is somewhere else. This cow. It will work. This cow, it will work. So, Bible said, he didn't find it. There. When he ran far, he said, this, this, this. And he did. And Adam was engrossed in her. Do you know the shocking thing? Whilst Adam thought he was looking for Eve, Eve was looking for Adam. You see, the narrative is because he's Hebrew. So, he always gives masculinity to who was talking. But we forget that woman too was also looking for him. Because, of course, it sounds as if Adam spoke and Eve was silent and dumb. And she said nothing. She must have agreed. Hmm. Are we here tonight? Because God is a God who will not violate will. So how can Adam choose her and she will not also have a word to say? <laughs> you think Jesus chose you? If like don't choose him, you'll be stuck. Yeah, that's why the Bible says if you don't choose the Lord, the Lord will not choose you. He's, he's choosing you because you chose him. In fact, many are called, few are chosen. It's not because God is selective. He chooses those who make themselves choosable. Tonight, before we leave here, you will tell God, I also choose you. Because you see, God created Adam to pursue Eve. And when he found Eve, Jesus sat and said, one day, one day, the lover will be pursued by the loved. So when God went looking for Adam, Adam, where are you? God also decided to hide. Then Matthew 2, Adam 2 now asks the question, where is he? <laughs> God was chasing Adam in the garden. Adam, where are you? But when redemption started, God also hid. So that Adam also say, where is he? Where is he? That is one king of the Jews. Where is he? he man is now looking for, this is the joy of God. The people he pursued will also now pursue him. No wonder the Spirit said to the church, He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. Revelation 22 17 says, The Spirit and the Bride are now having one voice pursuing the coming of Messiah. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. We need you now. So the church is desperate for his coming. We will degrade from Ephesus to Smyrna. Smena is 10 kings of punishment. You think COVID is the start? Or is the consummation? If you think this is it, you are sleeping. If you don't even believe it, I told you, prepare for 2023 and 2025. 2021, I told you in the month of February, is simulation. This dress we have out. COVID was test. They are just testing. The vaccine failed, yeah. They are trying, it's still not going to work. Because just test, they are testing man's response. And he, they've seen that man is a creature of fear. Yeah. 
Right now, if you even tell people there's no COVID again, people will not believe you. Because it has come. And the shocking thing is that man is so quick to accept disaster, it has come to stay. It's the new normal. We never say that about good things. It's only bad things we say it's the new normal. It has come to stay. The falling state of man. But the world is waiting for saviors to come up to the Mount of Esau and to divide possessions to the children of the world. Hey, why are you where you are? Why do you think you have the job you have? I pray. No, pastor has a book. I think, I, I think I'll, one of these days I'll put it on the page. Yeah, yeah. Living, living, what, what was the title? Living for the church. Yeah, living the church, what? Living a church-centered life. How that everything you have is for church. It's for God. One of my sons came to say, Papa, I like to do designs for you. I said, why? He said, I pay for the designs. But he says, I've received 20 times more he said, my sister even called me from the US that does the church pay? He said, no. So he sent me a text. He said, please don't let me ever stop designing for you and for the church. You, the way you are struggling is because the church is not your agenda. Oh, yeah. No, who will you go and task when everything you are doing? Because you see, you've lost. You've, let's go to Revelation. I'm now coming to start the message. Jesus Christ. Let's go to Revelation. Say, Revelation. 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 Yeah, yeah, I'm now in the message proper. I, I want you to get this one. Can we read Revelation chapter chapter 2, verse 1? Come on, read for me. From 1 to 6, that about. Yeah. I want to show you something quickly so that we can recover our love. Say somebody, I'm going to recover my love. Yeah. Because brother, do you know something? You know when you start dating, you want your boys to know that you've got a girl. Right? Are you dating? You're not dating. Are you sure? The way you are hesitating to shake your head. I hope you are not denying anybody. Amen. I mean, if you are dating, won't you let your boys know that you are the date? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, you know, there's a way when you are dating a certain girl, you are like, everybody should know that that's your girl. There's some girls, you don't know, it's like you dated like Leah. You understand? You dated in the guise of darkness. So, by the time the thing clears your eyes, you're like, what have I done? What have I done? What have I done? So, you're, you're like, say, what? you don't know posting me up. You're like, don't worry. I like to live a secret life. It's a lie. I don't trust what I just decided on. I, I don't trust. This thing I decided, mm, 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 mm. it's done on me. I just made a mistake. So I'll never push you up. I'll never push you up. Because no, 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 no. I, I don't trust my decision. You argue with the guy. You ne- so some, so some, said, Daddy, this guy I'm dating, he has never put me up. I said, Sister, you are either a second <laughs> Or he's dating somewhere else. Are you understanding? So the mystery behind it is this. When you are in love, the whole world will hear about Jesus. You see, our love is the reason why our status is not full of Christ. You know, it's so amazing that somebody will go and write, I mean, when you go to Instagram right now, it's so amazing. Cream for everything. No, I want to add, uh, uh, herbalist, how does that cream work? Cream for bottom, bottom. You see? I've seen some on this and they say when you put cream on but your bottom will swell. How what happens? Is it inflammation, hysteria? What's happening? Surface epidemic and inflammation. What what causes the Botox enlargement? Glutose maximus without exercise. So what is is it fat? How can the ointment increase fat deposit over there? I wonder. It's not possible. Yeah, yeah. I think about it. Because man of God, even when you do exercise, the lady said, do you have an exercise they like doing? Every time you go for this uh, 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 retreat or something, camp meeting or something, but what, the ladies, when, they, when, we, when we make mistakes, let the ladies come and lead us to the exercise. There's only one exercise. Squat! Squat! I'm like, hey! We are men! <laughs> we can't be squatting like that! <laughs> then we do, do push-up! <laughs> hey. So even that one cries muscle enlargement. If you don't exercise the muscle again, you have to go back to normal. So you wonder how a cream. <laughs> Mysteries of the <laughs> and people are subscribing Christians. What? No, it tells me a lot. Listen, listen. It tells me a lot. When I was growing the Lord then, I used to, you know, every human being here will always be little. I of us here, when we stand in front of the mirror, my eyes are too big. I don't like, one of my eyes is up. When I put a ruler, it slants. 
60 degrees. I don't like the way my nose looks. It's too open. I need it to be flat. <laughs> well, the other time my nose was small, so when I was growing, I kept pulling my nose. <laughs> so, hey, yeah. If you don't take care and you look at yourself outside the glory of God, you will by all means find an error. My toenails are too short. My toenails are too tall. What kind of toenails are these? Alien toenails. One, you know there's a way your thumb, your great toe can be. It's called great toe, but the middle toe is longer than the... So it's like, my, it's, my toes don't look nice for shoes. Listen. <laughs> oh, but let go, sure. Listen. Listen. One of my, you know, recent friends I met in a trip, you know, she was talking about how she used to have a beauty salon. And she mentioned how when some people come to do pedicure, athletes and ballet dancers, they don't remove their calluses under their, you know, there's a part, you know, there's a way, you know, after your toes, that's that the, the seat of the, you know, I don't know how to use this. It's supposed to be metatarsals, but that's part of uh, okay. Where the tarsal bones are. And I'm talking about, yeah. So those bones there, you know, there's some seat over there where you're, your 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 the atlas no it sounded scientific i remember when we do integrated science skeletal muscle <laughs> you do our atlas <laughs> pubic surfaces as a pubic <laughs> you're not getting the joke you're not scientific you're not scientific that's i'm i'm it's a very powerful joke. If you were a doctor, a scientist, you would have understood what I'm talking about. You're only making a joke fun. Amen. So, what is happening now is that, so you see, when runners are running, if you check um, runner stats, you know, it's only at the front part that has the spikes. The back is free. Because actually, runners don't run with foot flat. They, they run on top of their toes like that. That's how the ballet dancers do dance. They do this on top of their toes and rest on the seat of the toe. That's how they move like that. So she said when she's filing the nails and she gets to that place and she sees the calluses, she doesn't take it off. She allows the calluses to be there because that becomes protection for the runners and for the ballet dancers. If you take it off, they'll injure when they, when they run or they dance. And she made a statement so powerful. I want to use it in this regard. That those calluses also actually can be allegorically implied that the way you went through life is the way God allowed those calluses to protect the anointing you carry. Some few have to be extra sensitive because if you lose that callus of sensitivity, you will never prophesy. So you are praying that God change this my soft heart. That's your callus. It's the way, it's the way God designs you to be able to pick information. Let me bring it to your appearance. Everything you think is a negative is the very thing that will attract someone. Some of you don't know. You've now met somebody who liked a bow leg. Like, like this is your bow leg. You are crying your heart. Have you ever met someone like that? Like the very thing you are like, God, are you teasing me or what? The person says, that is what I like. I like bow kumukra. Like, like, And some ladies have very thick calves. Have you seen? Like calves, calves to um, ankle proportion. It's very heavy. And some men are like, <laughs> Sana, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the very thing you are complaining about, my legs are too big. It's the very thing that someone says, that's what I like. No, I want you to get this. The moment you get intimate to the Lord, you achieve one major thing innocence to self aware of god adam switched it adam lost innocence to self and became self-aware i'm naked i don't like this let me cover myself let me cook this let me arrange this self-aware but god created adam to be innocent of self he didn't know he had a self his self was god so his verdict of his beauty was when he sees God, that God, you are beautiful. Then I'm beautiful because you are my image. I'm your image and likeness. 
Adam didn't measure his own power. When his God majestic hand stretched out, he said, then I'm as powerful as him. Hmm. When a man gets intimate with God, when you are laying hands on the sick, you don't ask whether they'll be healed. You will see Jesus' hand in your hand. So there's no way the person will say, I was not healed. Yet there's a, oh God. When you are conscious of his presence in that intimate union, don't enter your office thinking they are seeing you. You just brought God to the place. So you don't talk a lot. You are just standing. Someone will walk up to you without you talking. You are honey. You have a sweetness. And say, sir, are you a pastor? Are, are you? There's something about you. I can't. It's Jesus. I brought him to the service. When a person is intimate with God, they don't try to create an outside facade. They don't try to create bigness. They are down to earth. But boy, dare you not give that person a mic. You will see power at his height. So the person looks normal. He looks sleepy. He's talking like gentle Jesus. But when he sees that guy in the catatombs, and the demons are scattering into the swine, like, ish. No wonder when he entered the boat, they thought he was a normal guy. Cast thy net. So, when they see you as a normal guy, they can argue. So they didn't see Jesus as powerful. It's like, it's like we've been telling you all night. It's like, it's again, it's okay. I mean, that doesn't spoil anything. They casted out and the fish and Peter knelt in the boat. Can you imagine? The man knelt in the boat and he said, he, Among the fish. Yeah, no, sometimes you have to make a drama so you understand what's going on. Among the fish, he knelt down. What's the fish? He was just like, You are surely the Lord. And if you know who Peter is, he didn't believe John. Because his brother was John the Baptist as a disciple. But he didn't care. Oh, it's John the Baptist. That fiery preacher. No, Jesus had to show him power. He said, I will follow you, sir. No, that's why, if you notice, amongst all the people Jesus called, it's only Peter he did a miracle to. Mm. The rest, he just said, follow me. Follow me, follow. Only Peter, he said, I have to show this guy power. He doesn't even respect my, the one who introduced me to ministry. Is it me you respect? He said, let me show him something. When Peter saw the face, he said, yeah, you are God. I will follow you. That's how Peter left fishing. To follow. You should tell the kind of guy he was. He was not ready for this classroom things. But if you even check history, he was past the, the enrollment age. <laughs> He's not yet 30, but he's past the enrollment teenage. He's in his 20s. So he's married. <laughs> That's following the Lord. So the mystery about this story is that, beloved, intimacy is key. Oh. And the devil has robbed us. I think it's plenty of hours. No. I wish I would show you how to pray in intimacy. That's why Jesus never forced the disciples to pray. Because it was an intimate affair. And he says, listen, I have not taught you how to pray yet because this one, you must grow into understanding what you must say. But I'll give you a model till that time. And when the time came, when they caught the key, they didn't go to say the Lord's Prayer in the upper room again. They gathered in Harabato Papa. The place shook. Chapter 6, the people were complaining in church. You know, you're not feeding us. You know, when the people increase complaining, we always start. In the book of Numbers, when the mixed multitude had arrived, they started complaining. We miss the cucumber. We miss the leek. We miss this. We have eaten manna for a long time. Well, how can you eat a food called what is this? It must have a name. We don't even know the name up to now. All this time, we have been eating what is this? Our children have been asking us, what are we going to eat? What is this? What kind of menu is that? We want to eat something we know the name. He said, tell them. They will eat meat till meat comes out of their nose. May you not let God answer you in spite of. There are some answers you shouldn't collect from God. God will say, you have been worrying me. Collect there. Collect. That's why you see that. Ah, there are some blessings that have sorrow. That came from God. <laughs> That's the one you have been worrying him. Collect. Collect. Are we revelations too? You must enter. So when you enter the room, man, you have to sing some song to the Lord. I had a certain old, I don't know if it is a, 
I, I don't know if it's uh, uh, Dean Martin or uh, I don't know some guy, but there's a song. You are so beautiful to me. Can't you see? You're everything I hope for. You're everything I need. I changed it. That sounds like Bishop Doug does that. Have you seen Bishop Doug? He would change UB40 tracks. Into some powerful. Do you understand? Hey. He changed one of some something. Hello. Let's take the song and let's use it to sing gospel. Hey, it's here also. <laughs> Are you here? In Revelation chapter 2, what does it say? To the angel of the church of Ephesus, right? These things say, see that who the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou, can, and how thou cannot bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. And has borne and has patience and has and for my name's sake has labored and has not nevertheless has left thy love. Remember oh, therefore Hold it. He said, I have something against you. Now he says, I know thy works, thy labor, and what? Thy what? Patience. But he says, I have something against you. Now this church of Ephesus is called the church of desire. Ephesus means desire, Zelu. Now, and this church started well. In fact, it is, you know, when you enter to the seven churches of Asia Minor, it's both revelatory, dispensational, historical, a whole lot of things. So you can come from different angles. But this church actually typifies the beginning of the decline of the matter in the church. He said, I know thy works, thy labor, and thy patience. But you have forgotten your first love. Now, the reason why Paul was saying this was that in 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 3, he says, remembering without season your work of faith, your labor of love, and the patience of your hope. Your work of faith, your labor of love, and your patience of hope. He spoke about in the sight of our Lord Jesus Christ and in God the Father. He said, knowing this, dearly beloved or dearly brethren, your election in God. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. So he is saying that in Revelations, they have left the faith connected to their work. Revelation says, I know your work, I know your labor, and I know your patience. But prior to this, they had the work of faith, the labor of love, and the patience of hope. They have lost their hope, so they are just patient. They have lost their love, so they are just laboring. They have lost their faith, so they are just working. A lot of us are finding ourselves in this state of Ephesus. It's a very perfect picture to explain to us. We are working for God, but there's no faith behind the work. We are working, but we doubt. It's like Matthew 28, verse 15, that was. The Bible says, when they had come to the foot of the mountain, Jesus had ascended in glory, majesty, standing before them. They worshipped the Lord, but they were doubting their heart. So it's like Jesus has risen, but we don't trust what we are worshipping. And all of us are like that today. We are in the house of God, but we are doubting. Beloved, this is a strange matter. Because you see, there was the Kenite lineage, lineage of Cain. God didn't use them for anything. But there was another lineage of Seth. And Bible says in Genesis chapter, uh, chapter 5, that an Adam begat Seth, and Seth now begat Enosh. Enosh begat Canaan, Canaan begat Malel, Malel begat Jared, Jared now begat Enoch. And Enoch now begat Methuselah. Methuselah begat Lamech. Lamech now begat Noah. Then Noah, when he was 500, begat Shem, Japheth, and Ham. These people now showed up, gave birth to children with their wife. Then in the days of the flood, sir, only Noah's family made it. I have a problem. Because by the time Methuselah was dying, you should know that, because let me, even, let me put it this way. By the time... <laughs> Enoch was born. Adam was around 670 something years. So Enoch and Adam lived at par for 288 years. It was just about some 50 something years after Adam died that the flood came. So she tell that even from Adam, he saw his seventh. Then how much more Seth? How much more Enoch? 
How much more can I know? How much more left? Jared. So all those guys, except the two who died before the flood came, all those guys saw. And in fact, if you didn't know, the next person after Methuselah, the oldest, second oldest person is who? The second oldest person in the Bible is who? Oh, if you know it, I'll give you a seat. Don't open the Bible. Who? It's not Adam. The next person is 967 years. It's not Enoch. It's Jared. <laughs> Ashe. <laughs> Ashe pa. Now, the mystery about this is that it tells me that by the time Noah had built the ark, there were other people in the godly seed who were alive. But why didn't you join the ark? Only Noah's family. Where was Lamech's people? Because Lamech gave birth to Noah and other sons and daughters. So where were they? Where is Noah's family members? Only Noah's close nuclear family entered the ark. The rest joined the crowd. This is the problem with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The only time we hear of these guys' names is when they enter the fire. The next time they didn't enter anything again. The next time they didn't join Daniel and the lions then. You know why? Because when they entered the fire, they were like, oh boy. The way God saved us was, it was just a nick in time. And nick in time, I tell you. Like we were just oh, saying, God will deliver us. Okay. We are not careful to answer you in this matter. But he declaring. And at the moment they were talking, the more nothing was happening. Because in their mind, they thought God would come down like a star with 70,000 angels and shine light and bright like a diamond and shine and cover all their eyes so that they will not see anything and you take over the matter. But God didn't do that. He kept letting the boys boast. We will not accept that. Then the guy said, Hit the open. He said, okay, You can threaten us, but you can't silence our voice. <laughs> like Joe, like Joe, hit it seven times hotter. Then the macho men started stripping their jacket. <laughs> so that look at me. Are oh, you sure? <laughs> then they look at this as they are. Is it hot enough? Is there yes? Is it hold there? Because you see, for them to heat the oven seven times, it was not two minutes, it was hours. And God still has not shown up. I had number. <laughs> it's, it's a microwave. <laughs> I did cook. It's hot. No, it was firewood. So it takes hours to heat it seven times hotter. And all that time they were standing there, they said, Don't bow. And the kids said, You bow. Okay. By this time they are thinking, but we are confessing. We are making powerful declaration. Where is God? And by the time they realize, Oh, we will not bow. By the time they realize they were hanging in the air. About when they look so much of guys have found them from the back, you know, from they have held them from the back and they were carrying them into the fire. <laughs> then they're not saying they're confessing, but God does not save us <laughs> because why it has got it to be entering the fire, so it looks like God will save us, but we'll still not bow. Mm. Then they carry this guy, sorry, they carry them into the fire. But Bible said, What do we about to put them in the fire? The guys who were throwing them in it began to have the experience of the heat. So not knowing when they were hitting the fire, Jesus was already waiting for them. Now, this is the shocking part. So the Lord was in the fire waiting for the guys. Because before they entered the fire, it was burning the outsiders, but they were not feeling anything. What we saw was the manifestation of Christ who was already waiting for them there. Listen, I pray for you. Your testimony is not the absence of the new revelation that God showed up in your matter. He has been there all along. But your testimony is just showing the world Nebuchadnezzar that that is like the son of God that is with them. So that surgery you had, that you thought God showed up when you were now come to be cut. He was with you on the bed. Because when they were putting them in the fire, he is the reason why the others felt the heat and they entered with ease. So he was already waiting for them Why am I saying what I'm saying? The moment you discover that intimacy is the key, you will stop relating to God on transactional business level. A lot of you are here, but like I've given all my life to God. I've given my time to God. Is this how God will punish me? You don't understand intimacy. 
If you did, you understand that the terms and conditions of your creation is not God who will save you and you will bless us. God said in the book of Psalm 67, through prophecy, God caused thy face to shine upon us that we may make known your ways in all the earth. So the reason God bless you, it's not even for you to be happy, it's for Jesus to be known. So Psalm 67 said, so your blessing is not even for, the only thing is that you are a water pipe, you will be wet yourself. Once you are blessed, you, the God is not a wicked taskmaster. If he tells you give me 10 cars, it means you have some 50. Did you get it? If God tells me give me 5 planes, it means you have some 2. So stop this transactional Christianity. That is the reason why your energy in praying comes low. Because all you are doing is Lord, let me be a testimony. Let me be an evidence. Listen, the goal of your evidential Christianity is love God. That's the conclusion of the matter. He didn't say have miracles. Miracles, like I said, is a product of God in your camp moving with you in circumstances. They will bow at your presence because it is God's presence. So your problem is that you are going without God and you are expecting miracles to happen. And he told the disciples in Matthew 17, 17, how long, not will I teach you, will I be with you? Because miracles will happen because I'm with you. Because I'm with you. Peter, last time when you casted the devil out, it worked. Once I'm not here and you don't recognize that my absence will cause a shortage. No, 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 no. Can, can we understand this one? Matthew chapter 14. Let's go there and come back here. Let me, let me show you this one. I want to show you the importance of this first love thing so that we get it once and for all. Matthew 14. This is a very powerful scripture we all use the time. Every time. Father, help your people. Oh, help your people. I pray for a generation that will love the word. Because we have not been taught right for a while. Now look at something. Look at something. Look at something. Mm. Look at something. In verse 27. He said, but straightway, Jesus spoke unto them, saying, be of good cheer, it is I. Because Jesus was walking on the water, and they supposed him to be a spirit. It means that the man was not coming like a normal person. He was glistening. He was shining, so they thought he's a ghost. So they cried out of fear. <laughs> so, you know, they cried out of fear. They were not calling Jesus Nemo. They were shouting, ah! We are finished. We are come to die. Ghosts. And Jesus said, oh, stop that. Don't be silly. It's me. Because I said straight away. It means that the, the fear was too much. That's what it means. Anytime Jesus saw them, they were always afraid. Now, you know, the time Jesus showed up in glory, the people were scared. Even on the transgression, Peter, James, John, they were with Jesus. Jesus starts shining with Elijah and Moses. These guys start getting afraid. And the voice spoke. And when they spoke, I don't know where Peter went to hide. Jesus had to now say, don't be afraid. I'm with you. So what happened here? He has to tell them, do not be afraid. I'm with you and you saw me change. Why are you scared? So he entered a certain state where it caused them to get scared. He said, be of good cheer, verse 27. I am be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if, that, if it be thou, pick me to come unto the water. And he said, come. And Peter was come down out of the ship. And he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Chief fisherman. He started walking on the water. Now, if you don't understand what is going on, go to verse 24. Mm. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea with the waves. For the wind was contrary. Mm. And the watch of and the fourth version, and Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. Why? This is the reason why the appearance was scary. The sea was still tempestuous. There is no account in this story that says Jesus stilled the water before he walked. He was walking in the midst of storms. Beloved, let me tell you something. Stop programming God. <laughs> he won't quiet every storm. He won't hush every flame. Sometimes you let the flame burn and let you enter it. But he knows what he's doing. Look what happened now. Look, 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 look. And Peter answered, Be with you, Lord. Be with you, come. And Peter began to walk on water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boys was, can you read that in the message translation? Verse 30. Verse 30. Yes. Um, but when he looked down at the waves, churning beneath his feet, he lost his nerve and started to sink. He mm -hmm. cried, Master, save me. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't hesitate. He reached down. Now, this it looks very nice in the English. 
But look at look what he says. He said, when he saw the wind boisterous. Now, I've always quoted and explained this in the scriptures. John 3 says, we don't see the wind. We feel it. Hello? We don't see the what? We feel it, right? So the time you start seeing the wind, then the wind is strong. It's either a whirlwind, a typhoon, or a hurricane. That's when you see the wind. The wind is felt. It's not seen. So it means what Peter is seeing is that the waters are, it's a churning. I, you know, that's many English. Turning means it's like a turbine. So Peter is walking on water that is not steel. He's tearing like a turbine under him. Brush, 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 moving. Then he starts walking. And when he takes his eyes off Jesus, now the Bible says, Jesus bid him to come. And he walked on the water to go to Jesus. This is the part we miss. He was not walking on water for fun. He was heading towards Jesus. Mm. Could it be that your miracles is so that you go to Jesus? Mm. Have you not read Psalm 23? Goodness and mercy follow us. The Hebrew says, goodness and mercy will hunt you down like a bloodhound till you enter the house of the Lord. That's why he said it. Goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of the life that you will dwell. So the purpose of goodness and mercy is to cause you to enter the house. Let me shock you why it is so. Do you know when you were a child, or so forth, and you were a child, and you grew up, now your mother does not have a problem talking to you, but you have a problem understanding what your mother is saying. Do you realize? So there's loss in communication. This is the way when a person is born again, they think they don't hear God. He's a baby in Christ. But the difference is this, and I'm going to say it, please hear me well. If you are feeling sleepy, open your eyes. Don't go and dream this message anywhere. Open. You know, there's a way you can dream and add what I didn't say. That prophet. <laughs> Yo. Now, what happened is this. Now, all of a sudden, sir, this child wants to communicate to the mother. But the mother also wants to communicate to the child. But there's a barrier. The baby wants to eat. The mother does not know. He thinks the baby is uneasy. So she moves the shirt, gives dusting powder, fan the baby. All those things are happening. But all of a sudden, the baby is still crying. Then, sometimes the baby will point something. Or give some gesture. The man, okay, he's hungry. Now look at this. Because there's communication barrier problem, the mother now gives the baby whatever it is crying for. Mm. Could it be that all the miracles you got as a newborn Christian was God talking to you? Mm. So the communication of God to you at your instant infant birth in Christ, that car you wanted, He gave you, that relationship you wanted, that job, it was God talking to you because you were crying like a baby. So anything you want, I collect. But when you grew up, mommy will tell you, wait, I'm cooking. <laughs> oh, wait, I'm cooking. Come and cut onions for me. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so who should pound the fufu for you to eat? Something's happening now. So when you were a baby, what are you doing? God will give it to you. And that giving to you is not God who was lying to you. It was communication. You can't understand what he wants to tell you. So follow me, sir. Hold me, hold me. This is an illustration Pastor Chin Talk did in Nigeria. And I want to do it here too because I, I saw that it will bless us. So I'm following you and like when you were big, as soon as you cry, do eh. Mm -hmm. Then I didn't say, mm, what are you? Say in, in, in. So you collect the this and then say in again. Then I'll give you water. So anything you want, I'll give it to you. But it gets to a point, do in. in. And I'm saying, don't do in again. So I'm going. So I'll do in again. In. So, but now you can talk. So talk. Dada. <laughs> so as we are going what is happening now the baby is growing so as he's growing the e -E, I don't mind him because I want him to communicate what he's feeling when he communicates it to because he's still a child he wants this pen but the pen will not be good for him so I'll deny him I'll deny him till he comes to the place where he's matured and instead of me to bring him to the place where he's collecting the road issues I've, end, I've brought him into a land that is full of everything he has been asking for this is the goal of God's Christian maturity. So a lot of the things on the way you are saying, no, why am I not dating? No, why have I not traveled? It's because you are asking for side things that will not cause your completion in maturity. There is a state when you get into, the passports are waiting, the visas are waiting, the contracts are waiting, the cars are waiting, but you have grown in God, it will not eat you up. It will not become idolatry. You will not enter into the food sacrifice to idols. When you start, eh, I'll give it to you. So you begin to learn how to talk. Beloved, the goal is intimacy. That you will walk with God. I pray that every song you look for, walk with God.
you think about God. Like David, he says, I'll remember him upon my bed. Now, David, oh man, David. No, the man had issues, but he loved God. And he knew God loved him. You know, it's one thing to love God like Peter. It's another thing to know God loves you like John. John uh, David had the two. He loved God and he knew God loved him. So he could look at God. In Psalm 51, he rather tells God, you know, in Simon's eyes, after that, he says, I know what you want. Thou desired truth in my inward parts, in verse 6. So God wants the scriptures to be in me. But I was shipping iniquity. But create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. Take all the throne. Take all the children. Take all the kingdoms. But take not thy Holy Ghost away from me. That's a man that loves God. That's a man that God is his goal. Beloved, where are you going? I love what the apostle said. That in the fullness of the dispensations of time, you shall gather all things even into Christ. Whether there be things in heaven, things in the earth, even in him, you shall gather all things to him. The Bible says, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance. According to him that has purposed all things, by the counsel by which he makes all things, or by the counsel by which he works all things. Then the Bible says, in verse 12, it said, unto whom who have received, O Shalabah, who have been sealed with these truths. Then he says, By whom ye also, when ye believed, when ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, ye have been sealed with the Holy Ghost of promise, which is an earnest of your possession. It is the earnest of your possession, the pledge, the forties. Beloved, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit as the, as the guarantee because God does not want you to inherit a car. God is not interested in you inheriting a mansion. God's goal for you is himself. The Lord is your portion. This is what the child of God does not realize. Everything in your life is geared for God to give you himself. That is what we inherit in that day. That is the greatest inheritance. I shared with you last week in spirituality. God and Reuben and the half tribe of Manasseh, they got to the border of the promised land. They said, this is it. A lot of you have got cars. You've got a ministry. But you are thinking, this is it. That's not it. The goal is God himself. The goal is God himself. A car is to make the journey easy. A house is to make the transition to God being your portion easy. That marriage is designed to assist God being the full portion. It's time to know the Holy Ghost, the Father, the Son is the goal. Until you reach there, it's yet there. Brother, when I activate the unlimited one, he will limit every limitation. If I just need to bring the unlimited into the limitation, then he will set a limit there. That's how far that limitation will come. He will draw the line. You don't touch this guy again. Beloved, I call you to death. I don't call you to ceremony. I don't call you to church as usual. I call you to a blazing, burning furnace in your office, in your car, in your dealing with friends. Some of you talk too much, but when the flame of his presence comes, you just meet a person and the Holy Ghost will just say, danger, danger. You just know. The person is not a bad person, but you know this, this is not designed by God. It's not in the pathway to my glory. You have to come to that place. Because sometimes we have worked, but there is no faith. We are working with doubt. <laughs> sometimes we are laboring in church, but we have lost our love. And it's like usual, business as usual. I see my brother and I don't feel anything. I see my sister and nothing moves me. I don't care for the work of God. I don't care whether the church is growing or not. I even join people to criticize church. Church. I am laboring, but my love is no more. And once upon a time, I'm patient. But what am I waiting for? Looking for the blessed hope. My hope is not attached to my patience. So I'm patient and I'm losing patience. Because once there is no hope, there is nothing for me to make 
after my patience by. So I think I've waited enough. But beloved, he said, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it means that I wait till I see Christ show forth in a matter. I wait till I see Christ arrange this matter for my glory. I remember when Paul and the Apostle John was fighting. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be like. But when we see him, we shall be like him. And everyone that has this hope purified himself, even as he is pure. The revelation of a coming king, a revelation of a coming kingdom is what makes us keep ourselves because we know this is just a dress rehearsal. This is just virtual reality. This is just a classroom. The main thing is about to show forth. Let's we have been called to superior matters we have been called to a height of intimacy I don't know what you are doing so far it is not religion stop counting the hours and start counting the intensity of your drunkenness of the love he said let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth for thy love is better than wine it starts with a desire because he said to the Ephesian church he said I have this against you but you are forsaking your first love return back to the height from which thou hast fallen even to the first works what is the first works? the work of faith the labor of love and the patience of hope once your love is gone there will be a problem in your work there will be a problem in your labor there will be a problem in your patience I call you to intensify love but when is this love coming from? he said herein is love that God sent forth his son to be a proposition for our sins. Beloved, not that we love him, but he first loved us. So the first love is God's love. A lot of you have struggled to accept God's love for you. You think you are too destroyed for God to love you. You think you have damaged God too much. I'm not good for God again. That is the reason why you are getting tired. But like the song said, Though I walk through the valley slow, I'll feel no evil. By the my heart will trust in you. How walk close enough on the highway through the darkest night. You hold my hands, Jesus. Guide my way. I'll not fear the shadow of death, because thou art. Your problem is not your prayer life. It's that he is with you. If the Lord is with you, tell me who can be against you. You got to know this. Be for us. Who shall be against you? He that spared not his only son, how shall he not freely give us all things? You don't know his love for you. Do you know his love for you? It's so serious that in spite of his unsolid holiness, Adam's limitation did not provoke judgment. He kept watching Adam. He kept watching Adam when he was planning his evil. He watched Adam and even came to ask Adam like a novice. Adam, where are you? The all-knowing God, because of intimacy, seems to be asking, where are you? A lot of you don't understand the language of God in the garden. It was a love language. If he was God, he would not ask where is Adam. He would say, Adam, I've seen him. But he was repeating with Adam at fellow intimacy level. Adam, where are you? I thought this a meeting time. Where are you? This is my set too. Where are you? Looking for Adam. And they said, Adam, where are you? Then Adam is the one who talks about this. What did you say? He said, I heard thy voice and I hid myself. He said, have you eaten the fruit? Then he asked him, who told you? Then he said, the woman you gave. Then he asked to Eve, he said, what have you done? 
It's like God was like, okay. Some days ago I was praying and said, son, if you knew how heartbroken I can be. I said, Lord, why? He said, but I created you to be companions. But I don't find anybody around. I created you as wives, but you are acting like a harlot. You want what I can give. You come to intimacy with me till I give you what you want. And I don't hear from you again. Am I not the one who gave you the job? Now when they call you for church, I can't come because I have a meeting. Am I not the one who gave you a husband? Now your husband says, don't come to church. Am I not the one who prayed for twins? Now you say, because of the twins, you are struggling for meeting. God said, why do you treat me? So he said, he's like a holy bar and a holier. They have gone halotting. That things have got their attention. Why? Jezebel has taught them. She is their tutor. She is their dadascolos. She has instructed them with indoctrination. Now they are seduced from God. Because Balaam brought a stumbling block. Which in the Greek is scandalon. Balaam brought a scandal. And the literal, listen, in the moral sense is what we call scandal. But the literal sense of scandal is a trap. So Balaam brought a trap to Israel. That you know what? I will tempt you with a little of the world. So we we'll inject worldliness into divinity. So the Christian is now a paradox of God and a paradox of the world. We don't know whether it's a bird or a bat. We don't know what he is. We can't tell his species. And God says, and do you know they make excuses? But the very thing they excuse him for are the very things they have time for. I gave them a job, but the job is their idol now. Because now they can tell me that I should stay away and their job is more important than me. Give them the job. Oh, you are setting yourself for disaster. Because you see, as long as Adam left the presence of God, he started to die. Death does not happen immediately. It starts from the day God ceases to be your God. So I love that song. And I will declare you are the old. The old. The old. I will declare you are the old. He is waiting for people who hazard their life. He said, When thou gave thy urim and to thy holy ones, who this tribe with thee by the waters of Massa, by the rivers of Meribah? He said they took no gain. They slew their own siblings because they were not with God. It's an antithesis to them. Jesus said, I came to set enmity between father and child, between mother and daughter, between husband and wife. He said, if you love and do not hate your own family, you're not ready to fall. He was not saying hate in the sense of anger. It was a euphemism. He's saying, prefer me above everybody you've made idols from your family you've made idols from your parents you've made idols from your job how much does your job pay you how much tell me how much a day in thy court is better than a thousand hours if you only can trust god oh boy oh boy mm. i met a millionaire in nigeria an american millionaire and i said how do you make your millions he said i just speak in tongues and God gives me a business idea. That's it. That's it. Don't be coming to Ghana. I'll let you meet all of them. Some of them have jets. It's not. It's not. Printed. It's Holy Ghost. It's Holy Ghost. It's how do we begin in the spirit and we end in the flesh? Mumma shell. Kaiyestoma. He could still hear prayers. 
I said, what do you do? He said, I just arrange course outlines online. And each student pays $1,000. He said, the session, I can have 300, 300 members who have enrolled for my school. So it means that session alone. And the session is usually four weeks, sir. So 300000 in four weeks. And it's just a person sitting there and telling you how to coordinate your life. Holy Ghost. We don't use Holy Ghost in church alone. He must be in your bedroom. He must be in that office. You must be a Joseph in your office. But see, intimacy. Intimacy. That's why everybody is attracting us. Save God. A man should struggle to get your attention. Because the only one, the way he will get your attention is to get God's attention. And God will now whisper to you. Yeah, that's him. But anybody shows up. The person has not even proposed you on a date. Mr. Oja. If you only knew his love for you. He said, the love of Christ constrained us for we does charge. That if one died, your addiction is because you are not intimate. Yes, you feel alone, rejected, dejected. That's why in the pornography or something can attract you because you are rejected, you feel alone. But when you are in Him and He's not boring, oh man, Kimunda Aisha, you just lie on your bank. I won't see. You know, you'll be shocked. Sometimes I just sit down, my wife will tune to Korean series, and as I'm there, they'll be speaking Chinese, Korean. And the Holy Ghost will be telling me the meaning of what they are saying before it appears on the subtitle. I'm telling you. I'm just like, Holy Ghost, let's, 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 let's. It's a book. It's a scope. He's saying this. That's why I said, yeah. That's it. There's too much in God. Languages, landscapes, eternal ridges. Books. Do you know can read a book without opening it? By the Holy Ghost? You have no idea. Because the devil has limited you to think that everything you can see and touch is the entire There is glories, 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 glories. Glories. And today I call you to a higher level. On the scale of 0 to 10, some of you might be at 0, some of you 1, some of you 2. But whatever level you are in, there's an upgrade. There's an upgrade to intimacy. There's a level. There's a level. There's a level where God can take... They said there was a man called Charles Finney. Before he ever entered the town, God announced him 100 miles ahead. The train lines... 100 miles ahead, people will be falling in the train station. And the train master will say, Charles Finney is on his way. He's the only one that can change environments like this. There are people, they don't enter habitat. They bring climate. When they show up, if you are not spiritual, you will become spiritual. They carry the climate of heaven. But once you are close to them, something about you will change. I just pray sometimes, eh, you got to realize that there are some people you just got to stick with because they are climates for your sanctity. When you learn the system, you too become a climate changer. You show up in America and everybody around you who stay like a cable boat. I didn't know American people have started praying like Ghana people. They met this lady in the stream. So I was praying when I prayed, as soon as I got there, she just, American lady was like, What's going on? It's all we saw your tape. It's like we saw your tape. And she told me something that humbled me. She says, The first night you spoke in tongues, I went to meditate on your tongues the whole night. I said, They meditate on tongues. So the next day she was doing Adigo. I said, Ah, this thing sounds familiar. I said, yeah. And she showed me a people in America. They'll be playing drums. Pire, high people, pire. Fire. You know, and the painful part about it is that you think you got something, and God says, I brought it to you, but you didn't see. So I'm sending it elsewhere. <sighs> that I may bear. 
I like Amy Carmichael's prayer. Make me thy food. O flame of God. Make me thy food. I won't trade the presence of God for anything. Death, sickness dies there. Tissue man. Jesus told Mary, Martha, you are busy for a lot of things. Eh? But Mary has found this thing. And to, it means that intimacy is the only thing that can never be taken. He said, this one, eh, she has found a good thing. It will never be taken away. A car, you can lose it. Nobody can take your, your closeness to God. Because you can carry him to the prison. And now Tisha Mele. He said, my wife and I were watching a certain series. Some ex convict had come home. They went to see parole officer. The parole officer said they have curfew. After six, they can't go out. And the guys were bored. They were like, why? Since nine months, I popped in my head. They should pray. Me, they said I can't go anywhere. That the damn mistake that they made me a prisoner. That, that, that's how they will release me on time. Jesus Christ. Atube Kapara. Brento Probo Soprobo Koto Probosai. Akalamata. Let them bring that snapner and those blade to. Kadima Toy. Latinimita. Oh my God. And he said, in prison, you can't sleep deep. Because anything can happen to you. Oh, like they'll see something there. Oh, like they'll send me to condemn self. I don't fight anybody. Person brings a knife, it's about to trick you. Lift up your hands in the name of Jesus. Come on. Because it's not your time. I came to perform science here. You are like Paul. I've been waiting to enter prison. Because I want to start a cell in your house. No, Paul wanted to see. He said, greet them that are of the household of Caesar. So you see, once we thought Paul was in prison, Paul was looking for a church in Caesar's house. The contradiction of his imprisonment. Nero thought he had finished the guy. He didn't know his own wife was his convert. They said, greet them. Romans 16. That are of the household of Caesar. <laughs> That's why I petitioned Caesar. They thought I was a crazy. I wanted to enter prison. I wanted to start a church there. No, there are dimensions where you can tell a child, don't worry. Let me go to Isawam. If a man is not intimate to God, he will rather kneel down and say, God, why? But when a man is intimate to God, he said, thy will, O God. He would rather be smiling at the prison. <laughs> when he says, he say, ah, this guy is different. You sit there the first night. Even the wardens will become your student. Sit down. Let me teach you the ways of God. Yakumush Aratakiba. They'll say, what to release you into? He said, no, it's not time. I want, to, I want to be here for six months. I need all of you to be hot. <laughs> I'm telling you. They will not send prison preacher. Because by the time the prison preacher comes, the prisoners are imparting themselves. God wants to send us everywhere. No wonder the Moravians entered that slave ship by themselves. He said, the Lamb of God is worthy of his wages. It takes intense love. You see, because of black renaissance, they always show us the black parts. Go check history. They were white slaves. They were also white slaves. Go check. But most of them were missionaries who planted themselves in slavery so they could preach to fellow slaves. You, too, you, you see, the devil has made you too self-self. So, it's weird to be godly. It's weird to wear a t-shirt, God is my life. Like, let's tell you that you wear a jacket and cover it. Why do they say Friday is t-shirt Friday? Then you're rather ready, I love MOBA. I Write Jesus, my lover. This with a t-shirt. You are walking in the mall of a Christian, you are hiding. <laughs> Your love is low. It must increase. Because the same way when you get a nice girl and you pace nicely in the Akramo, everybody should say that's your babe. And like you are you're feeling proud. Nah, that about Obiba, Obiba, Obiba is Obiba JK, you are Obiba is by your side. And you are just walking with her. It's the same with Jesus. Beloved. It starts with fellowship and it ends with partnership. It starts with fellowship with the Lord and it ends with partnership with them. When he started in Songs of Solomon, he said, let him kiss me. Can we read Songs of Solomon chapter 7? 
Verse 11. Let me end with this. That I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. The life I now live, I live by the faith. Not by my faith. By the faith of the Son of God. So I have to live in the faith of Jesus' believing for me. Do you know Hebrews 11, Hebrews chapter 12, sorry, has been wrongly quoted, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. If you have the King James, our is in italics. O-U-R is in italics. So you're supposed to read, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of faith. Because when it comes to faith, have the God kind of faith. Who, who do you think faith is from? Oh. In fact, that scripture we quote in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. That the just shall live by his faith. Have you remember that? So your living is, the original translation says, the just shall live by his, not your. The his there is not the Christian's faith. It is God's faith. God has believed for you. So believe in his believing. I, then I said, so when I'm going to heal somebody, I don't pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus. No, you don't even heal somebody because I have faith enough to heal the person. I told you one day we'll do healing school here. You heal the person based on Jesus' believing for the person. He has perfected faith for us. So I access his faith. Have the God kind of faith. Peter didn't fast with Jesus. Peter didn't pray all night with Jesus. All he had to do was believe in what Jesus believed. Come. So without prayer and fasting, he was walking where Jesus was walking. Simple. This is the mystery of intimacy. God wants to be your faith supply. God wants to be your power supply. So that when you show up, even without adequacy, he is your adequacy. Unless you are with him. Oh God. What you are not even qualified for. He gives you ancient anointing. Because you are with him. We came together. I came with God. I came with God. I came with God. You access things that usually your reading will not give you access to. You start talking like that. You have to do a presentation. Just destroy the flesh and tell the Holy Ghost take over. Take over. You start talking and rambling things with accuracy. Even predicting data without it. I'm telling you. Man, this is my witness. Sometimes someone can tell me. So how much is the CD? I'll just mention the quote without even checking internet. So, so, what do you estimate this height to be? I just mentioned that. It's not prophetic. He's with me. I was in Nigeria and the, the prophet asked me, one of the prophets from London, as he said, he said, you know, usually people have encounters before they go minister. People have, you know, they have to pray some other. I said, no. So, how about you? How is your... I saw me, my own. I don't minister. No, if you know me, I don't minister by gift. I minister by intimacy. So, as I'm ministering, I'm actually the Holy Ghost questions. Like, so what, what is going on? So, this one, don't mind. It has to be serious in the word. So, so I just say, the Lord be with you. I won't even say it. It's your own is work solution. Some people, they need encouragement. So God said, this one, tell him. All he has gone through in life. So that's why sometimes I can argue with you and you are not sure of what I'm saying. But I know what I'm saying. So if you go and ask, you go like, how did you know what I don't even know? Yeah, because the ancient of this was telling me what you, even me, I was not aware of. <laughs> I met Prof recently from Manasseh. And he was telling me something. He said, man of God, you met a lady at Pastor Isaiah's place. Easter convention. And he said, you told the lady she's from Togo. But he said, no, she's from Ghana, Kwetwe or something. I said, no, you are from Togo. Go and ask your parents. You remember? Prof said he told the lady the same thing a week later. Exact prophecy. Everything I told the lady. He said, first she was present to the, the, the lady said, this is what Prof said to me just last week. And he said, she went to ask the dad. And the dad said, yes, the prophet is right. My mother comes from Togo. Even the girl didn't know she's from Togo. Now, we don't tell you things because of gift. We tell you things because Jesus, who knows what you will never know. How can I tell you 200 years ago what is happening? Where was I? 200 years ago, 1800. Where? I don't think I was even a light in God. So we are not operating on that level. I want to show you in this generation that there's a better place to operate. It's called intimacy. That is the place where your gift is shut down by his love. He will tell you, this one, don't say it. She <clears throat> <clears throat> will not be in a hurry to prove a point. Because you are interested in him. 
up to date after preaching, I ask God, how did I score? I've been doing that for the past eight years. Every preaching, I ask God, what's my score? He said, this was 99.9. I said, why? why? He said, because you learned to lean on me every way. Sometimes you say it's 97. I said, Lord, what happens? Oh, this part you were getting too excited. It... No, why should you get to heaven before you get surprised that all that you did for God was zero? The, right? He said the spiritual, he judges all things so that he himself is not judged. So after the spiritual man, he's judging his life now. So the day he gets to heaven, he's not surprised that God says, he knows. Beloved, can you read that scripture for me quickly? The Song of Solomon 7 11. Come, my beloved, let us go forth into the field. Now, when he started, she's the, the woman is called the love, and the man is the beloved. So, what is happening now is this. Now, <laughs> The bride has grown to a point where, as of in between the story, the husband will come. And when he comes, <laughs> he said, my beloved is mine and I am his. So the woman is now calling the man, my beloved, come. Let us go where? Let us go forth into the field. So the woman from intimacy. Chapter 1, chapter 2 talks about chambers, banqueting hall, and all those intimacy frequencies. After all of this intimacy build up, she's now mature because in the middle of the journey, Bible says she now goes to lie down in complacency. Then the beloved comes looking in the window in the lattice, chapter 4, and he's looking for him and she's sleeping. He said, Who shall quicken me from this bed? Who shall slam me from this slumber? Then she wakes up and says, ah, I smell my beloved upon the doorknobs. She smells like cassia and aloes. And he said, I see him through the lattices. But she now opens the door and is looking for the Lord. And the Lord is not there. Because the Lord was knocking on the door. And she was playing hide and seek with the Lord. Now she enters the streets and says, Oh, daughters of Jerusalem, tell me where you have hidden my, my, my beloved. Where is he? Show me where he is. And the Lord was there. But finally, when she matured, she now sits in the room and says, Be Beloved, come. Let us go into that field. The assignment of the ministry you have arranged from the beginning. What it means to say is that you will fail in ministry. If you fail in intimacy. A lot of people's problems. Starts from intimacy. And the first thing Satan will steal from you. I taught you. The chewing locust. The swarming locust. The caterpillar. The cankerworm. I told you. You eat your food. And the food is love. When the devil eats your food. And your heart becomes hardened to God. You don't feel like kneeling down again. You open the Bible at dawn, you don't feel like it. It's 4.30, you are up. You don't know what to say. You're just sitting there. You probably put on a radio station to help you pray. Beloved, there's trouble. The moment a radio station has to help you pray, you have gone to ground zero. World Trade Center. Ground zero. That's a bomb site. I'm telling you. It means something's happening to you. You can't pray on your own again. You can't stir yourself up. There's none that stirred up himself to lay with God. Read Songs of Solomon 2.14. Let me show you what is happening when we don't pray. Let me show you what is happening when we don't pray. <laughs> ah, Jesus Christ. Songs 2.14. What's happening? Songs of Solomon 2.14. Uh-huh. Oh, my thou. So, God, which is the husband, is now talking. Uh-huh. Oh, my thou. Thou art in the clefts of the mm -hmm. lake, in the secret places of the stairs. Let me see thy come. So, the, the man is craving for the countenance of the woman. The Lord. He says, oh my dove, you are in the clefts of the rock, in the secret place of the what? Most high, of the stairs. And what happens? Let me see thy countenance. Uh -huh. Let me hear thy voice. Hmm? For sweet is thy voice, and thy countenance is calm. So the Lord is now saying that when he is waiting for you in prayer, he wants to see your countenance. He wants to hear your voice. That's why we go to pray. We don't go to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the next moment. No, 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 no. The highest form of prayer it's intimate worship. When you wake up, Animana Shunde Mayanga Yada, Shemana Yamande Yamangaya, Shemana Yamaloko. You'll be shocked what happens to you at that frequency. Joy comes into your heart. Ikebe la la mandoria. Then all of a sudden, your thought comes to your mind. You are going to feel like hmm, it's a lie. Ina Yamandon Korianda Shende, Emana Manariando Korea. Love.
Hey, for the most, I'll sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I'll sing praises to your name. Come on, shout. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Go by now, yeah. For your name. Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. So the ability to obey is hinged on the potency of your love. The reason why you have struggled to obey what God said is because your love is low. And this love is low. It's not self-generated. It's a response. It's what you receive from the Lord that you can give back. Anytime I'm struggling to love people, I know that I have to go into my secret place. There's a way you can pray. All of a sudden, you begin to love people again. You're like, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Come on, I answer the man. The month of May, June, July, is a season of love. Hear me as a prophet. Because the love of many is going to work school. People will be tired. Watch it. And I'm showing the antidote today. Get back to the secret place. Get back to the chambers where no demon can come there. God's bedroom is not accessible to devils. Get to that altar of intimacy. Lord, I love you. Nobody, you and God. Sometimes put off the TV. It's 9.30, I know. It's not time to sleep. Just be in your room and start singing. I'll sing praises to your name. Let the phone be off. Oh, Lord. Listen. Oh God. Oh. You're struggling with gossip. Intimacy. Because God is the only one who will allow you to gossip, but He will not let you to tell someone what you just discussed. He said, Tell me, tell me. That's what the Holy Ghost does. That this is not guy, he's not happy. I'm like, Lord, why? Should I tell him? He said, No, it's you and I. He is training you so that you will be first respondent. First respondent to gossip. First respondent to rumor. I don't praise people because I see them do something. He said, when the spirit of wisdom comes on you, you shall not judge by the seeing of the eye, but the hearing of the ear. You must learn as a child of God by this time, not to be incited by people. When you hear a story, go kneel down. God, what saith thee about this one? What is your verdict? Then you will hear the Lord speak. I remember those days. They used to bash a lot of prophets in Nigeria and Ghana. Then I went to ask God, God, these people, their methods are horrible. Then God said, it's the education. I was shocked. He said, son, it's the education. He said, what do you mean? He said, they know as much as they are doing. It changed my attitude towards them. Because God said to me, he says, that's the level of schooling they got. That is why they seem to look controversial. And when I went to check, a lot of them didn't finish GHS. And I understood why. And God said, Son, I didn't call you as a judge. If what you are watching is offending you, change the station. You are corrupting your spirit, your frequencies with mundane things. It's time to change. There are songs waiting in the heavens, there are miracles waiting manifestation. There are staying powers hanging in your bed. Why have you discarded this beautiful life of a journey with God? Think about it again. He said, we'll think of it. But you know the short thing. 
Let him, because he is far away, kiss me. The kisses of his mother. When he gets close after that shout, for your love, it's better than me. You have no idea why he is waiting for you to just say, come. Through desire, a man who seeketh and intermeddling himself separates himself. It's time to say, Lord, for all I'm going through. It's a father's birthday yesterday. And his father in the Lord said something. He said, for close to 20-something years, I've known Dr. George. I've never heard him blame God for his predicament. He said to us yesterday that he even ate sometimes from dustbins. I said, I never heard him blame God in all this. Time. He said one time, if he had an accident, 2011, and he was in the hospital and they were bandaging that. He was going to preach. The taxi had an accident. His bone got broken, shattered in the arm, dislocated and broken. So he said they were fixing POP on the hand. And his father and the Lord called him and said, My God, George, how are you doing? So, that is by grace, oh, by grace. He said, ah, What's happening? He said, oh, They are putting POP on my hand. So he said, ah, he thought you would rather say, oh, that is not easy. Oh. The other said, oh, daddy, everything's fine. He said, in all the years, and I sat down and said, ah, I hope I've not complained. I hope one day they'll say, all the years I've known him, he's never blamed God. Listen, they are men of God, though. and that's why men can give you that title. But God's men, only God has chosen, not man. When God chooses you, you become God's man. Let them put people on TV and internet. God needs people to change the engine of a nation. He will not go to the TV people. He will come to the man he has chosen. Say, you know something? Start groaning. I need to shift the earth. I need you to do it. Shift it. Because you are God's man. Here on earth, nobody will see your face. But there in heaven, he says, let my intimates draw closer. And those who were favorite doing popular without being close you see them far off but those who were the engines of god those who were like paul in the map of the lord those people you can easily belittle them they look too much like this jesus you can disregard them they carry the forces of eternity one word from them i was speaking to one friend of mine whose father is a bishop he said my daddy is too genuine Someone did something wrong and took their land. And I said, one day I saw daddy stand in the room and say, God, watch him. He said, the next day the guy got paralyzed. Some people, their rank with God is not gift. It's they are God's lover. If you make them cry, God will finish you. Oh, I'm telling you. You have not me. But God has told me sometimes, he said, don't, if you cry at them, they'll die. So don't cry. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm serious. So I said, hold it, hold it. Because I vowed to God 15 years ago that the next time a teardrop drops, it shouldn't be because of a human being. It should be because of worship. So how my tears come when I'm under anointing? After God, so God says, if anybody will fight your tears with me, I will, because I, I don't like rivals. So God will come for anybody who will make me cry. No, you can vow that vow. This was not me being special. Don't look at me like that. You too can tell God a lot from today. My tears are yours. No man, no woman will make me cry except worship. So if you give your tears as a sacrifice to God, the day God sees tears, that means you are worshiping Him. Whoever makes you cry, aside He God, He will deal with the person. How can you touch the wife of the king? And the pastor Tinto gave an example. He says, supposing Bray's wife comes to flirt with him. That's how you stand like a cusp. Buhari's wife, you won't try. President's wife, you are going to flirt with her. No, you don't fear God. You stand there still. Imagine the devil flirting with the wife of the most high. You don't know your position. That's why. If you did, 
You will tell God. So if I'm your wife, why am I sick? Why is this in my body? Take it out. He said, I've been waiting for you to say it. Because you've not permitted me yet. You have been carrying this burden for a while. Ah, is it not time to say, Lord, I'm done? I'm carrying this guilt of death in my house. It's yours. Take it. I, this person died and I am not free. Lord, collect it. I don't blame you again for this death. Holy Spirit. Your healing is here. <laughs> Your miracle is here. There are some people online now. The power of God has hit you already crying. You're already crying because it's time to change. Whatever has fought your altar of worship and prayer, it's time to let it go. Isn't it too heavy? You know yourself. It's an internal issue. It's not external, it's internal. You know yourself. Because your very connection to God is compromised. But today, you can be free. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, can you speak to him something? You will not eat food sacrificed to animals. Come He is here. He is here. 